From the day a lonely vector first leaped across our screens, our lives changed. We saw a glimpse into a new world and immediately wanted more. We made friends, fought enemies, and fell in love along the way. It's about our passion, the desire to win, to conquer, to play. Yeah, not bad. As the technology improved, so did the players. But the same fundamental principle has always applied. Be the best. The journey has not been an easy one, but we always knew it would end here. The stage is set. The course is clear. 70,000 gamers. Thousands of new titles. The world's largest video game convention. And only one network brings you inside. G4 presents E306 Live. One week from the center of the gaming universe. And it all starts right now. G4 and Attack of the Show present E306 Live. Thank everybody. Welcome to E306 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. We are kicking off day three here at the LA Convention yeah. Center. I'm Kevin Pereira. Well, if you're Kevin Pereira, then I must be Olivia Munn. It says it right there. Yeah, it does. And nobody covers the biggest gaming event of the year like G4. The showroom floor is packed with rabid gamers, and we are in the middle of it. By the time this day is over, you'll have more insider information than Bill Gates' chauffeur. Oh, he's That's good. a fact. He knows a that lot. That's a fact. Over the next three hours, we've got it all. First look game premieres, exclusive interviews with the gaming industry's best and brightest, and even hands-on demos of the biggest new games. It's three hours of live insider coverage, and you're not going to get it anywhere else. Nowhere. Than Just G4. Four. That's right. Oh, and when you say video games, which we've said about 3,000 times yeah. over the last few days, <laughs> the next words out of your mouth had better be Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Yes, our X-Play cohorts are with us again, rifling through the hype to bring you the true E3 gems. How's it going, guys? I, I'd say it's going pretty well. Yeah, we're I'm, a good I'm time. standing, I'm alive, I'm breathing, and thank you, Olivia. <laughs> well, as you can see, we're hanging in there, and as you can see, we have mastered the calm exterior expected of serious journalists. Which thinly veils our willingness to bludgeon anyone who gets between us and a Nintendo Wii. Now, over the course of the next three hours, we've got an extreme close-up look at Final Fantasy 13, a hands-on with God of War 2, and some FaceTime with Nintendo's Wii guru, Reggie fils -Ami. But we are only part of a much larger entity. G4 has eyes and ears all over the show floor. Like Ugh. insects. We're Scientologists. We function like a hive mind. And our first stop is with Zach Selwyn. Hey there, Captain Morgan. Coming up this hour, Tony Hawk. But first, let's send it over to our special correspondent, Gilbert Gottfried. Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and the Boston Phoenix recently named me the unsexiest man in the world. Well, here I am at E3, the biggest geek fest in the universe. I'm to find someone less sexy than me here. All right, and now to Kristen Hulk. All right, Gilbert, you're crazy, but I love you. I'm here at EA checking out Battlefield 2142, Superman Return, and the new Def Jam. More on all that later. Back to you guys, Kevin and Olivia. Thanks, Kristen. Now, the only way you could get closer to the action is if you raised enough funds to host E307 <laughs> in your rec room, perhaps. Yes, be aware, though, John Carmack is allergic to shag carpeting. Just an FYI. Seriously, you had a sneezing fit in our green room. <laughs> and just because in your living room, just because you're there, it doesn't mean you can't share in the E3 experience. No. No, that's true. This is what we want you to do in order to fully immerse yourself in our world. A, don't sleep for four days. B, eat only Krispy Kremes and drink Mountain Dew. And C, pack your house with the sweatiest friends you can find. And if you don't have any of those, Adam Sessler is out on loan. Right, Kevin? Totally. And D, check out the heat index at g4tv.com slash E3. That's where you can tell us which E3 announcement or debut has most excited you. Yes, or of course, you can always text your opinion to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. That's right, we'll be checking out the heat index every hour and reading your comments on air, so make them good. Now, we've comfortably settled in by this point, but some of you may still be reeling from the sheer amount of gamery we paraded <laughs> before your hungry eyes this week. Well, here's a look at how far we've come and how much we have yet to see. 
It happens only once a year, makes you weak in the knees, and puts you in a warm, happy place. No, no, it's not getting laid. It's E3. E3 is the premier event for game developers the world over. It is a nexus for all things gaming. It's where you see the hottest titles before anyone else. You've seen the Master in Chief and that prosperous plumber Nintendo keeps employed full time and a certain looker named Solid Snake. But E3 is just getting warmed up. There's still a ton to see, like such a wee little franchise you might have heard about called The Legend of Zelda. Man, Link looks good in green. Microsoft is finding new ways to put the fear of God into asphalt with Forza Motorsport 2, the sequel to the hit Xbox racing sim. It's fast, shiny, beautiful. Oh, and uh, did I mention it's fast? One man bleeds red, white, and blue. His name is Sam Fisher, and he's doing whatever it takes to keep the free world free in Splinter Cell Double Agent. Flowing robes are in this season. Sony continues the PS3 onslaught by unleashing our first glimpses of Assassin's Creed. All this is locked, loaded, and aimed right at your pretty little eyeballs, and you'll only get it from G4 Live. Let the E3 begin, my friends. Okay, that is enough buildup. I need my game fix. Morgan, Adam, help me out. All right, as usual, Olivia, I function as your enabler. <laughs> E3 is where the new games come to make their mark, but we shouldn't forget about the enduring classics. Yes, like a siren call to fantasy role-playing fans and androgyny enthusiasts, the Final Fantasy series is out to prove that there's nothing unlucky about 13. We're taking an extreme close-up look on Final Fantasy 13. You know, they keep saying that it's the final fantasy, and yet here we are, 13 chapters in and still going strong. In Final Fantasy 13 for the PS3, it looks like they've upped the action. Watch as this hot anime babe stylishly takes out a train full of bad guys. See what happens when you forget your NBA pass? Not much is known about whether the game uses the same active battle system we glimpsed in part 12, but we do know that the footage you're seeing now is supposedly rendered in real time by PS3 hardware. Hmm, maybe it is almost worth 600 bucks. Almost. Square Enix has already announced that they're releasing an action-based spin-off game, which takes place in the same universe called Final Fantasy vs. 13. It's too soon to say exactly what it's all about, but with a name like that, it's safe to say there's plenty more butt-kicking in store. As you can probably tell, the trailer is a bit short on actual information, but here's a recap of what we've learned. It features a pink-haired character who looks a bit like Yuna from Part 10. It has tons of fast-paced action and improbable physics. And it has trains. Lots and lots of futuristic trains. There's no official release date set, but we'll have a lot more info on Final Fantasy 13 for you soon. Now start working on those cosplay outfits, fanboys. Looks good. Do you does. think it looks a little too good? Yeah, I mean, this is very <laughs> similar to the to the trailer we saw for eight days yesterday for, right. for, the, for the PS3. When you get the HUD or you get the menu on it, the action in the background doesn't seem to be jibing with what you would actually see when you see, like, the menu options. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, they can add a menu, just like they can add yes. anything else in the scene. So, it's, you know, we don't really know until we actually can get to play it on the show yes, floor. I'm and not that's... saying that it couldn't look like that, and if oh, anyone exactly. could make it look like that, it would be square, because they have technology, right. even though they have funny outfits. And we'd love for them to come and show it to us on the stage, and we'd, yes, bring we'd it on. see for ourselves. Bring it on. <laughs> All right, saying bring it on, we're going to send it back over to Kevin and Olivia now. Because they need constant supervision. This is yeah. true. This is true. Funny outfits, yes, but you own all of them, Sessler. <laughs> Admit it. Now, EA Games, without fail, is one company that knows how to make a gigantic E3 splash. And last year, they hit us with Godfather. And this year, we're getting a face full of Battlefield 2142. I'm just glad I didn't get anything in my eye. No, no, no it's good. It's good for your good, hair, though. Yeah. Just get it in there. Thank God. All right, well, we've got Kristen Holt on the floor at the EA booth. <laughs> checking out everything they have to offer because this year they're giving a sneak peek at some incredible games. Take a look. Superman soars onto the Xbox 360 with Superman Returns. Partly based on the big Hollywood flick coming out this summer, Clark sports the blue and red tights once more. In this game, which takes place in over 80 square miles of Metropolis, Superman must master his powers in order to save the city from nine supervillains. Superman Return hits the shelves this fall. 
Beats, man. I'm just getting started. Next on the list is Def Jam Fight for New York, The Takeover. In this upcoming PSP title, EA gives new meaning to rap battle. Gamers will fight for supremacy as they knock the grills out of the mouths of their favorite rappers. I wonder how much the Tooth Fairy would give you if you put that under your pillow. Speaking of Battlefield, that brings us to Battlefield 2142. In the distant future, there won't be global warming. There will be global cooling. After a drastic climate change buries most of the world under a sheet of ice, humans will war over the remaining inhabitable soil. EA definitely had some exciting things brewing, and I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get my hands on them. Keep it locked right here as we keep you up to date on everything as it happens, live from E3. Battlefield 2142, yeah. I gotta tell you, Battlefield is one of my favorite first-person shooter franchises. Yes, you told me. I was a little let down with their latest offering, so I'm uh -huh. hoping 2142 brings it back. It's just, how many times can you play the same old soldier in the same yeah. modern situation or World War II? It's time for the future. I want lasers and mechs. Thank you, EA. Now, I gotta ask you, Superman hasn't had great games in the past, and they no. really need it this time. What do you think of it? Superman's been in trouble for since the N64, I think, and, and they even delayed this game to give it a little more time for the Superman DVD, so that you could say that they're giving the time that it needs, or you could say that maybe it's in trouble and EA knows it, so time will tell. Time will tell. All right, everyone, there is so much more E306 Live left. You might as well just put on a pot of coffee and disavow all knowledge of anniversaries, birthdays, or you know, pretty much anything else that gets you in You don't have way. friends anyways. <laughs> it's been days, actually, since I've pulled MySpace, believe it or not. That's the sacrifice that I'm willing to make. So everybody, okay. stick around. It's going to pay off. <laughs> Up next, we score some FaceTime with Nintendo's crowd-pleasing Reggie fils -Ami. And later, we get our hands on God of War 2, one of the year's most anticipated sequels. All right, welcome back to E3 06 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I'm Olivia Munn, and I am waist deep in the single biggest video game event in the world. Big events track big names, and there are few names bigger in the worlds of sports or video games than Tony Hawk. Remember, kids, skateboarding is not a crime. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Zach Selwyn is on the floor with Tony Hawk, presented by Scion. All right, I'm standing here with the Karch Karai of professional skateboarding. Tony Hawk, how you doing today, sir? Ah, uh, feel good. It's exciting here. Yeah, it is. Now, you got two games coming out this year, is that correct? Yeah, we have uh, Project 8, which is our next big skating game, you know, on all the new consoles. And then we've got Downhill Jam, which is exclusively for Nintendo, and especially on the Wii with the new controller that you move. And right. it's basically like a, it's a downhill skate racing game, but you can do all the old tricks that you know in our, you know, our previous series but they give you boost power to just go faster and beat everyone else. How is that controller going to work in the skateboarding game? Uh, exactly how it feels. You know, you, you turn it one way and your, your guy... And you're going to move that way. way. Yeah. I, was doing, I was playing it last night for the first time. I got, the, I got my hands on the controller. Yeah. And it's intuitive. As soon as you pick it up, you know what to do. Are you excited about these two games coming out this year? Of course. Why two? Because we want one to be more just focused on racing. And, and we've never done that before, and it's really exciting because it's, it's a whole new genre. And then the other one is just going to blow doors on everything we've done in the past. When you see the trailer for it, no one can believe it's actual gameplay, and it is. Awesome, man. Well, I look forward to checking out both your games this year. Cool. Thanks for spending some time right. with us. And now for someone who has yet to figure out how to turn his crocheting hobby into a gold mine, Kevin Pereira. Hey, it's, it's huge on the Internet. I'm back-ordered, man. All right. Now, if you've ever wondered just how Nintendo manages to remain one of the most innovative game companies in the world, you need to meet a man by the name of Mr. Reggie fils -Ami. And luckily, you're about to, because I've got some FaceTime with the man himself. Viva la Reggie Lucia! Reginald Reggie fils -Ami is head marketing exec for Nintendo of America, and he's one of the biggest personalities in the video game world. Reggie made a name for himself two years ago at E3 when he rhymed his Nintendo mission statement, short and sweet. I'm about kicking ass, I'm about taking names, and we're about making games. Since then, Reginator has gained a cult following on the internet, and he's taking on the Reggie Lucian. 
Fans hope he's helping Nintendo shed its kitty image by getting down to business with the Nintendo Wii and bringing in some more growing up fare. Listen to that. They love the Reggie. Everybody's excited for the Wii. They love it. Way to go. He's giving out free Wii's, everybody. Free. Exactly. Exactly. Reggie, thank it's you for fabulous. joining us, man. It's a, a very different E3 for you this year, my friend. It, it really is. Last year, we had a very strong E3. The year before that, obviously, for me, it was a fantastic E3. Sure. But there's nothing like this year. The energy that we have in our booth, we've got three and a half hour waits. We've got people wrapped around the booth. It's fantastic. You it, came out a few years ago, as we saw. You're never going to live the sound bite down. You said you're going to kick ass and take names. Last year at E3, when we talked, I'm going to be completely honest, I thought my ass was perfectly safe. This year, I can taste the sweat on your knee. And as such, I just kind of wanted to give you this because I, you I'm deserve a, I'm, it. I'm already taking names. Please, take already it. Already taking names. It's yours because you guys have come out of the box. I mean, you said you were, gonna, you were promising a revolution. You, you delivered a Wii, which we're going to get to. But I mean, really, you, Nintendo is going to bring gaming to people that have never gamed before, right? That's the mission. You know. What we're about is bringing gaming not only to people who haven't gamed before, or haven't gamed recently, but it's also about satisfying the core as well. We want to do it all. We've said we're an and company, not an or company, and you look at what we're doing on the Wii console, you look at what we're doing on DS, yeah, we're kicking ass and taking names. No, definitely. A long list of them. Now, the problem I have is that I cannot go into an EB Games or a Best Buy and ask to pre-order something called the Wii. Why did you do this to me? Why did you make me have to find a girl to pretend she's mine to go in and pre-order something for me? You know, we love the name. The Wii console from Nintendo is huge, and I'll tell you, we know that initially the fans may not have been all that happy, but they've taken it on their own. They're now calling this the Wiimote. Of course. Of course. And, uh, and we feel very good about it. And the awareness is huge. The acceptance is great. It's good to go. Did you, do you like Wii better than Revolution, though? I have to ask. Because Revolution know, sounded good. I was ready. I wanted to be part of it. A as a marketer, I really do. Revolution captured the essence of what it was that we're trying to do. We're certainly looking to do things differently. But Wii is inclusive. Wii is about taking gaming mass, which right. it really isn't today. What's well, funny, you, you mentioned in your press conference, you said, look, raise your hands if you know somebody who's never watched a movie or television or listened to music. Do you really think that this is going to be the console that gets everybody to play games that, that has said, hey, I've never tried a video game. They're too difficult or they're too scary. What's the problem and how is Nintendo solving it with the Wiimote? You know, we absolutely believe that this is going to be the way to bring gaming to the masses. Why? Because it's intuitive. It's easy to pick up and play. You saw in our press conference, we pulled a lucky fan out of the audience to come play with us, play some tennis, sure. and he picked it up. He did a fantastic shot that blew right by me, and the kid had never played before. Right. That's what we're trying to do. And are we confident? Yes. Why do we believe? Because look at the success we've had with Nintendo DS. Sure, sure. You guys have done some innovative stuff there. I've seen people on buses shouting blue at their brain training games, which I never thought I would see in my life. Exactly. And how old was that person? You know, probably maybe 35, 40 years old. Again, it's Drove consumers. Drove a minivan, had the kids at soccer, I'm assuming. No. Consumers you've never seen playing games before. Sure. And that, but beyond that, we still have DS Lite. We've got the new Super Mario Brothers. We've got Zelda for DS. It's not just being about a small segment of consumers. It's really going mass. Now, I have to ask about the PlayStation 3, because I was at Sony's press conference, and they said, hey, look, we've got a secret. Here it is. Our controller's motion sensitive, too, and you don't need to put something on your TV. They were clearly talking a little bit of veiled trash. Were you guys, were you shaking in your boots uh, back at home when you were watching this? Or? Yeah, a absolutely not. I've had the opportunity to look at their, uh, their controller, put it in my hands. It's nothing like what we're doing. We have full range of motion. We have the nunchuck device that is also motion sensitive. It's like apples and oranges. And certainly our friends at, at Sony like to do that. But we know we've got the true innovation in the category, and the Wii console is going to be fabulous. Now, I've seen this remote. Can, do you mind if I touch sure. it? We've talked about it all week, the nunchuck and the wand. But how am I going to play my, my classic SNES on this? How am I going to play my N64? Because this, does, this seems a little unwieldy. You know, uh, Kevin, great question. And, I uh, always ask those. And, uh, <laughs> We're going to break some news here for you. This is the what we're calling the classic style controller. Oh, look at that. It, it plugs right into the oh. Wii remote, and then it has all your buttons that you need to play N64 uh, generation games, X, Y, A, B buttons for um, NES, SNES, shoulder buttons, can, everything can you I need. Can I touch it, Reg, please? You, 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 please? Can, you, can, you can touch my Wii controller. Thank you, yes. So even you, even you understand that there's some fun to be had, had with the Wii name. There's the, fun to be had. The final question I have, because we're out of time, is how much is this going to be and when are we getting it? Because you, know, you said you're going to break that on the show as well, so please, let's hear it. Well, I did not say I was going to break price and break launch okay. date. We're, we're holding that back. 
You, you Reggie, need, I need another reason Reggie, for you when, to invite me back. When people interview me, they say, they say, Kevin, what's the console to get this holiday? I want to be able to tell them, at least give me this, I want to be able to tell them, hold out for the Wii because it's going to at least be the cheapest. It will absolutely be the cheapest. We've gone on record saying that you're going to get more fun for less money on our console. And uh, you will be able to walk in, buy games, buy the console, walk away console with cash. Console 199, games 49.99. Can you want to do the $60 thing? Cash still left in your pocket, so it's uh, it's going to be great. And we've all already announced Zelda at launch, yes. Wii Sports at launch. I believe Ubisoft has announced that Red Steel will be there at launch, so we're very excited. That's huge. If they didn't, they just did. I, I didn't do it. You know, that, they have to do that. That's their news. Thank you so much for coming on. Again, congratulations. It's going to be a huge year for Nintendo and, and probably many more to come as well. Kevin, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Everybody, let's send it back over to Adam and Morgan. I'm going to play with this thing. Time with Reggie. Ugh. I'm jealous. Right. <laughs> Common sense tells us to pace ourselves. When have we ever listened to common sense? I don't know. Well, after this brief interlude, we'll be back with more E306 Live, more game premieres, more interviews, more everything, I promise. Don't give me that look. What? True. Up next, who dares to summon the god of war? We'll find out, and later we go live to Konami's booth. Yeah, it's good to be the king. Yeah. Hey, everybody, welcome king. back to E306 Live, presented by Sion of Mountain Dew. And trust us, if you were here in the L.A. Convention Center, you'd be lost in a swarm of costumed yeah. characters and frazzled game execs and C-list celebrities. Like Kevin, right? Is that what you're going with? Indeed. All right. <laughs> All right, so just sit back and let us guide you through the largest gaming event in the world. You can just thank us later. Yeah, seriously. Right yeah. now, we'll let the guiding begin. X Plays Morgan Webb is standing by, anxiously awaiting a chance, I'm very jealous, to dive into the sequel to God of War. And Morgan. Yes, anxious is too soft a word, Kevin. I've missed Kratos so much, but he still, he still lives on the disc in my house. But I'm about to get my hands on God of War 2. <laughs> Joining me is creative director uh, David Jaffe. Yes, there we go. We got a little love. And playing the game is God of War director Corey Barlow. Welcome, guys. Thanks, now, I, I saw your face. You had a full page in Wired. You were across from what, oh, Miyamoto, right. weren't you? Uh, no, it was. Uh, no. no, no, no. It was Kojima. Kojima. Kojima, yes. Not a bad place to be. It's not. No, that was a, that was a hard picture to take. They kept wanting me to pose. It was like the most professional photo shoot I've ever done. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't pose, lady. And finally, they just took some stock picture. But that was cool. It was Good. fun. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was great to see you in there. Yeah. And you were so young. Um, OK, God of War 2. Yes. We have it being played right now, so what's new? What's new? Corey? Yes. Well, Corey, you're the director. What do you think? What's new? So what's new? We're, we're, we are bringing back all the base that we had for Kratos in the first game, and we are kind of enhancing everything. So that sort of same pick-up-and-play control system that we had, we're bringing that back, but we are giving Kratos all new moves, all new magic. And he still has the Blades of he Chaos, still has right? The, right? He has the Blades of Athena that he got okay. at the end of the first game, and he actually will be able to use sub-weapons and combo those in. Okay, great. Well, let's play. Let's, let's, uh, let's find some enemies to kill. Now, the story was really one of the draws about God of War 1. It integrated very seamlessly with the gameplay. Now, how are you looking to follow up on that? Well, I mean, what's cool about it is that we, we never really looked at it like, we actually wanted to call this God of War, and the marketing was like, well, we have to call it God of War 2 because people okay. don't know what it is. Yeah. God of War is really, it's, it's one big story, and we're okay. sort of in the middle of telling uh, a bigger story. And so for us, it's really, this game picks up right where the first game leaves off, right when Ares is dead, Kratos assumes the throne of the God so of now, War. So now he is the God of War. You're he playing is, as the God of War. He is the God of War at the beginning. And okay. basically, the, the gist of the story is about sort of how Kratos deals with the politics and petty backstabbing of the gods of Olympus and how ultimately that kind of drives him to make choices in God of War 2 that ultimately leads to a pretty neat ending of the entire thing. The tagline of God of War 2 is the end begins. And I think maybe in about, if we're fortunate and fans really like God of War 2 and we're allowed to continue with okay. our story, eventually people will see really what that means. But we, we have big things planned for sort of the whole franchise, and this is sort of a, a great continuation of, of, of that story. So storytelling okay. is still a very big part. There's no, there are, there are no really fundamental gameplay changes though. Well, I mean, yes, in that, you know, Kratos now has, uh, he can grapple, he can fly the Pegasus, um, he has brand new moves, brand new enemies, brand new strategies, but the reality of it is, is we look at the God of War series as a, as a, as a story. It's a playable movie, basically. It's a playable okay. story. And we're not really looking to sort of list bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. These are the brand new features of God of War. It really is 
a continuation of the adventure, the sort of the story of Kratos and how okay. he sort of goes through this change. Um, is it going to be about the same length as the last one, do you think? Um, you know, we're you not really yet. designing the game, I think, with length in mind right now. Uh -huh. It's how long does it take to tell the story that we want to tell. So how long it turns out, I mean, we're definitely going to shoot for the same gameplay time, but I would love more. But it really is kind of at yeah. the mercy of the I think we'd all, we, I think we'd all love a little more. Now, that sort of brings us to the movie. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about working with working with that, because I know you're, you're really big into story and telling a good story. In terms of this particular franchise, right. yeah. I mean, well, the movie, uh, like the God of War movie. The, the God of Universal, War movie. I mean, you know, I don't know. You know how it goes. It's like, who knows if these things are actually going to get made. I know right. we just announced a fantastic writer for our movie, David Self. Uh, who wrote 13 Days with Kevin Costner, wrote The Road to Perdition. Uh, he's writing Captain America for Marvel. Um, so we were really excited to get, like, a really great writer. It's not some kind of crappy, you know, C-minus level guy who's going to write, you know, right. Blood Rain or something. This is, like, a real great <laughs> triple-A writer. And you and so, have your hands in there a little bit? As much as I can. I mean, okay. the reality is I love making games. I'm not a good movie maker. Uh, you can see my films to attest to that. But we have, <laughs> we have the guys who made Batman Begins heading this up. We have a great screenwriter. So you never know. I, I'm pretty pessimistic, but... <laughs> In terms of in terms of these things never get made. Everything's always in production, right. you know, in, in development. But if it actually got made, we have a, an amazing sort of behind the scenes uh, crew ready to sort of take it on and sort of bring that pedigree to God of War. So I hope it happens, but you Great. never know. Well, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Thanks for coming. We are not worthy. I mean, that's just me. Although it doesn't feel like it right now, we don't live solely to cover E3. It's true. Adam has got some information on what we do when we're allowed to leave the convention center. I, I, I cannot believe that got a war two footage. She, she stabbed him, like, in the eye. It was like Mo, but burly. Anyway, G4's video game coverage does not end with E3. There's also the video game mashup. That's TV's only daily block dedicated to all things video game. Now, the heart of the mashup is this show I know something about it. It's called X-Play. It's where Morgan Webb and I play and review every game we get our hands on. The mashup, it's three full hours of cheats, tips, tricks, and our brutally honest game reviews. Now, don't miss X-Play and the rest of the mashup. That's weekdays from 4 to 7 p.m. That's right here on G4. Now, leaving us right now would be, well, it would be so typical of you, wouldn't it? I'm hoping you can change. If not, I am confident that what we have coming up is powerful enough to glue you to your lounge furniture of choice. Stick around for more E306 Live. That's right after this. We're checking out all the latest from Konami right after this break. And later, we'll go creeping in the shadows with the newest edition in the Splinter Cell series. That's right, I'm Kevin Pereira, the angel on your other shoulder. Wow, you're a good person. They're I really am, good. actually. But the real question is, are you impressed with what we've shown you so far? Well, there's only one way to let us know. And no, it's not. Get away from the typewriter. Log on to g4tv.com slash e3 and vote in our heat index. Yes, just log on to g4tv.com slash e3 or text e3 to g4txt, that's 44898 to vote, and register for your E3 live news alerts. You've seen a lot of what E3 has to offer this week, so let us know which things you have left in <laughs> bewilderment and awe. There's a, there's a dude in a Mexican wrestler mask back there. Do you see? That's awesome. Sorry, it has me a little bewildered. Anyway, there's so much breaking video game news here at E3. We are racing, literally, in place it's to bring it all to you. It's just a mask. Don't be scared. I, I think it's pretty there's awesome. a real person underneath. <laughs> all right, They're not I'm, real people. But don't worry, everyone. The feed is next. Look at me, world. I'm Layla Cayley, and I've got the latest E3 news for you. I call it The Feet. Shh. Don't tell the Pope, but the Da Vinci Code is coming soon to consoles and PCs near you. Developed with author Dan Brown, the game covers events not seen in the book or the film and features puzzle solving and stealth combat play. I sure hope it also has a thrilling library research. Mm. In other movies, two games news, do you feel lucky? Or do you poke? Dirty Harry, and he's dirty, is coming to next-gen consoles from Warner Brothers Interactive. It features the voice and likeness of Clint Eastwood in the title role with a supporting cast that includes Gene Hackman and Lawrence Fishburne. No words yet on a release date. And that's it for all the news for now. Keep it tuned to G4 for hot E3 info throughout the day and visit us on the web at g4tv.com. Until next time, I'm Layla Cayley, and you have been defeated.
actually, uh, you know, I, yeah. I said to myself, I'm going to single-handedly take down every freak in the crowd. I got the, the wrestler guy, but then there's something else going on over there. I don't know how you're going to just... Uh, I, uh, well, I okay, you took this guy's mask, so you're going to wash him down in the I got, bath I'm or gonna, something? I'm going to hose him down after. We'll be all right. All right. We'll be all right. But right now, we're going to get to the games. Now, there are only a select few game characters who reach the level of instant name recognition, right? You know, yeah. Metal Gear Hero. Solid Snake, yeah, he's one of those guys. And Adam Sessler has a report from inside the company that birthed him. Cesarean, by the way. Konami. <laughs> so, I'm here at the Konami booth, and yeah, I know I'm a good looking guy, but these guys, they're not looking at me. We'll get to that later. Hey, if you play Castlevania down to Sorrow, you want to check out Portrait of Ruin. Pretty much the same game, but you have outdoor environments and two players that play cooperatively. And because it's the 20th anniversary, the whip is back. Despite the movie, I'm always ready to play another Silent Hill game. And now it's on the PSP with Silent Hill Origins. This is an original story that is supposed to answer some of the questions about what's wrong with Silent Hill. I don't know. I expect to be more confused, but a little creeped out. Hey, if you're scared of the outdoors, rejoice. Lunar Nights is the antecedent to bog type, but you don't have to go outside. The sun and the moon change in the top screen of your DS, and that affects how you deal with the legions of the cute undead. And then there's Metal Gear Solid 4. This is easily the most anticipated game for the PS3, and it's for such good reason. It looks absolutely awesome. And the story itself seems rather compelling. It's filled with fatalism and, well, hell, there's a gun in Snake's mouth. I don't know. It may have the lale lu -lay lo but I want to be playing this one right now. Hey, I think it's pretty clear that Konami has a very firm grasp on the handheld and are ready for the next gen. Man, I hope he doesn't get naked again. Thanks, Adam. Now, weeknights at midnight just got a little bit darker with Midnight Spank, the new late night block here on J4. Midnight Spank mixes shows like Bonsai, Brainiac, and Cinematech Nocturnal Emissions with new ones like Ed the Sox Night Party, Cheaters, and the Late Night Peep Show, all making for a rather outrageous block of shows that could only air in late night. Tonight at midnight, it's back-to-back -back episodes of Cinematech Nocturnal Emissions. That's Midnight Spank every weeknight at midnight right here on G4. Here's the goes both ways. Uh, I, I don't know how many more ways to say it, but if you remain patient during these commercial breaks, you'll be rewarded with lots more E306 Live. I know, you'd think they would get it by now. I, I assume nothing, Olivia. There's plenty of playtime left as we check out the most awaited next-gen games. And later, 60 Seconds with Morgan Webb. Yes. I'm in Kevin's spot, aren't I? You are. You're my new Kevin Pereira. Ha, Hi. Ha, ha, ha. Welcome back to E306 <laughs> Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. I am Adam Sessler. You are? And I've set, yes, I am. Oh. Adam. Olivia. Good. Anyway, I've set a world <laughs> record for most consecutive hours staring at an LCD monitor. That's right. E3 is all about new games, new consoles, and new ridiculous feats of endurance. I have sometimes hard time reading. Yeah, office. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonder David Blaine isn't here to actually help me with right, the Right. Well, he's too busy regurgitating water right now. <laughs> and it's a wonder that we don't collapse under the sheer amount of the exclusive game coverage we're bringing the people at home. We've already brought you closer to the big game titles than anyone else, but we still had to send Kevin Pereira back out into the showroom to make sure we didn't miss any of the rest. It's our floor report, field by Mountain Dew. Thanks, guys. Yes, I'm down on the E3 floor for even more madness. Let's take a look at some of the titles that you're going to be playing in the years to come. Now at E3 this year, it's all about the tried and true franchises. So why don't we get things rolling with Namco Bandai's Ridge Racer 7. Yeah. Namco is being pretty tight-lipped on specifics, but we do know that there will be some sort of support for online co-op play involving up to 14 players. Ridge Racer 7 will surely set the early bar for the PlayStation 3's technology. One of the most exciting fighting franchises is back with Tekken 6 for the PlayStation 3. In the next-gen version of this fighting powerhouse, most of your favorite characters are back, along with some new faces and updated graphics that are sure to blow you away. Of course, the game is still in development, so we have no news as to when it will actually be released. 
Sega is bringing you the sequel to Full Auto, you know, the gun-crazy next-gen car combat game, with Full Auto 2 Battle Lines. Battle Lines will offer an all-new arena mode, full destructible environments, and over 20 different tracks. Although Full Auto premiered on the Xbox 360, Battle Lines is being developed exclusively for the PlayStation 3. Of course, as you can see, there are a ton of great titles on the way. I can't wait to get my hands on all of them. But keep it tuned right here for more news and updates. In the meantime, however, back to you, Olivia. Thanks, Kev. All right, everyone, we are moving at such a precarious speed here. We can't spare a minute unless one has been specifically set aside beforehand. Luckily, that Morgan Webb always plans ahead. Here is another Morgan Minute. The press conferences are over, and we now have to ask ourselves, are the big console developers accomplishing their goals? Sony had the first press conference and expected to blow everyone out of the water, and they failed. Game demos were underwhelming, their price is insane, and computer-generated Tiger Woods scares me a little bit. Microsoft has had a year to figure things out with the 360, and it shows. If people can get Grand Theft Auto 4 and Halo 3 on the 360, they'll wonder why anyone would spend $600 on a PS3. And then there's the Wii. The name is still dumb. What matters is the gameplay. The controller is intuitive, and seeing Link and Mario back in action is exciting. Microsoft has staked out its territory as the console of young, violent men. Nintendo is redefining frivolous fun and creating innovative ways to play. Let's just hope Sony can bring in enough of the truly hardcore to keep the console alive. Hey, you know, I'm going to buy one, but that's because I can write it off on my taxes. <laughs> and that's been a minute, and I've been Morgan. Thanks, Morgan. All right, everyone, now would be a good time to stretch, grab a fresh beverage, and feed any plants, pets, or children that happen to be nearby. Close. But don't make a big to-do about it. There is so much more E306 Live coming up. Coming up. We've got unrestricted access to all the new LucasArts games right after the break. And later, an eye-opening look at E3 Booth Babes. Tell me which things have impressed you the most because it's all been just a big blur. Pretty much, pretty much. First up is the 13th installment in everyone's favorite Feathered Hair Big Sword franchise. No, no, it's not Adam Goes to Hollywood. It's oh. Final Fantasy. You said it was scorching, Sessler. Or flaming. Hello. <laughs> wow. That's surprising, actually. I, I usually, never think it is, too. I'm, I'm surprised it's not volcanic because pe the people who like You're Final right. Fantasy sit there on their computer and go vote, 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 vote until it gets the highest score. That's because you know I was voting. <laughs> oh, I man. I see. Well, next up, the uh, man who continues to turn teen rebellion into a video game juggernauts, Tony Hawk. You thought his next-gen titles were... Warm. I'm not surprised, I gotta be honest. Look, I, I love the first few Tony Hawk games. Tony Hawk 2 for the Dreamcast wore out all my controllers, but at this point, it's kind of old news. It was the Dreamcast. Yes. You said it right there old yourself. News. Okay. Right. Finally, God of War 2. This is so easy to predict. Volcanic. Volcanic. It was awesome. Yeah. You can ride a Pegasus. You, you, you can stab eyes out. I said it before, I'll say it again. Coming down with so much force. You I can open it. crates. With our yes, you can, but if you do it with brute force, because oh, those sorry. crates, they, That's right. they deserve to be brittle and, and twisted and hurt. <laughs> all right, well, the people at home all voted at g4tv.com slash E3, and now it's time to hear what Not Your Khakis thought about the Tony Hawk games. All yes, right. that's his name. He's my cargo pants. <laughs> all right, this is what he said. This looks like an interesting game, but maybe too complicated. Yeah. Mm hmm. Wonder what okay. he's playing. I'm not, so look, I buy it. They had a thousand and one moves to make your combos four yeah. minutes long. Or maybe the guy has flippers. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, yeah, that would make it difficult. You're going to get some mail. <laughs> All right. Well, if you didn't like the results of the heat index, then do something about it. Get over to g4tv.com slash E3 and vote for what's coming up in the next hour. Or, as always, you can text E3 to G4TXT. That's 44898 to vote and register for E3 live news alerts. But right now, we've still got lots more coming up here live from E3. Rest assured, we are building towards something huge. Yes, we tell you what exactly, but we don't want to ruin the surprise. Oh, no, like the show Lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except our surprise won't end up just being a science experiment. Right, oh. or just some fat guy's dream. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of fat guy's fantasies, check out what awaits you when E3 06 Live hits our number deuce. Did somebody call a plumber? We've got the latest from Nintendo right after the break. And later, we'll boldly go into Star Trek Legacy. Louder. Big hit, big hit. Big hit. Bro, so much work on our Yeah, oh, Come on, everybody. Welcome back to E306 
106 Live, presented by Silent and Mountain Dew. I'm Kevin Pereira, and I recently threw my shoulder out playing oh. with the uh, Nintendo Wii. Yeah, right. it hurts. Thanks. If you guys are coming, we are coming to you live from the LA Convention Center, which for this week only has been converted into the largest collection of video game obsessives this side of the Tokyo Public School System. Yes, and let's remind our ADD-stricken yeah. audience that starting Monday, things are going to look very different on very our little different. program, Attack of the yeah. Show. Just uh, take a gander behind me. Uh, well, not those guys. Not those guys there, but these guys yeah, here. They're coming with us. These mannequin guys? Yeah, yeah. Not the guys making noise back here. Not not so much him. More right here. Not yeah. back there. They're coming More along. More in here. Because we, yeah. have a, we have a new set and some of the new faces, yeah. but the same Attack of the Show attitude. And coming up this year, AOTS breaks out with the week-long road trips. In July, we'll crash the superhero of conventions with Comic-Con Live. Yes, in August, we'll head to Sin City, Las Vegas, for a week of the sights and sounds that only Attack of the Show can bring you. And in September, we are off to Tokyo, the place that seems to be defining what's next, including animation, gadgets, and video games. It's so good. It all starts Monday with an all-new Attack of the Show, right, cha, at 7 p.m. Now, I hope you've digested everything we threw at you in the first hour because hour two is set to kick off. We're getting our hands on oh. Splinter Cell Double Agent, feasting our eyes on Booth Babes and answering the question, what is Gilbert Goffrey doing here? E306 Live rolls on now. See the latest installments from fanboy fave Zelda. Plus, we've got a high-powered demo for Splinter Cell Double Agent. And of course, we've got the Booth Babes. G4 and Attack of the Show present... E306 Live. Yes. We are standing here all day and just they scream louder. I feed off them. It's yes. good. Welcome back to G4's coverage of E306 Live, presented by Scion and the Mountain Dew. I'm Kevin Pereira, and I haven't slept since the expo doors opened ah, yesterday. Ah, then you're along with me. And I'm Olivia Munn. G4 is the only network getting hands-on with the latest games and giving you face time with the guys who created the games you already love. That's right. Coming up, we're going to talk to Sega head Simon Jeffrey, and later on, we'll take you down to the floor to stare at God's gift to Lycra, the booth babes. Yes, and from that to God's gift to sweatpants, <laughs> Adam Sessler. Now, let's find out what he and his ex-play co-host Morgan Webb have in store for the next hour. Is, 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 she, is she saying that kind of I like, pack a lot of back? That, like, I, I, I got luggage in the in, 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 You, in you the don't rumpus? really, though. I think that's your wallet. Really? Okay. Wow. Thank you, Kevin and Olivia. Morgan and I are <laughs> anxiously awaiting the return of the stealthiest character in gaming. Yes, Sam Fisher is back, and we're strapping on the night vision goggles and getting our hands on Splinter Cell Double Agent in just a little bit. But first, with the show floor being such a spectacle of nerdcraft and booth instruction as well, it's a little difficult to take in. Yes, which is why we do not dare to do it ourselves. We have a skilled team of operatives out there. Operatives like Zach Selwyn. <gasps> hey, thanks, Adam. Uh, I'm still here at E3 looking for the hottest booth babes on day two. But first, let's see what Kristen Holt is up to. Hey, Zach. I'm smack in the middle of the Nintendo DS booth at E3. And with all the Wii fuss, we got to make sure that the little Nintendo DS doesn't get jealous. So I'll tell you all about that in just a little bit. But right now, let's check in with Kevin and Olivia. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, yeah. you brave exposition warriors. Now, we're seeing a lot of stuff today. Mm -hmm. you got to take it easy. And it's going to be very hard to decide what's really best. Well, then let's just leave it up to the viewers. Oh, yeah. I guess that worked last hour. Let's, yeah. uh, let's do that. Why not? All right, all you guys have to do is log on to g4tv.com slash e3 and vote in our heat index. Just tell us what's on your mind, and if you, we like what you have to say, we might even read it on the air. We probably will. We'll print it <laughs> and shred it. Of course, you can also text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. Remember, though, the heat index isn't a competition. That's right, no, no. wagering. We understand that trying to choose between, say, Gears of War or Heavenly Sword is like trying to choose between Adam and Morgan. Yes. Actually, that one's easy. <laughs> As everyone knows, Morgan and I would never square off in a competition. I've no. trained with Navy SEALs. And I weep embarrassingly when injured. Yeah. Now you've giggled along with us whenever <laughs> we mention the Nintendo Wii, Wii, but you have to admit they've come to E306 packet. Here's our extreme close-up on the Wii starting lineup. Wii!
if there's one thing fans at E3 are dying to get their hands on, it's the Wii. And Nintendo is bringing out their big guns to convince the crowd of the system's potential. First up is Super Mario Galaxy. Players still use the analog stick to control the tiny Italian plumber, but certain moves can only be performed with the motion sensor controllers. For example, stand underneath certain icons and shake the nunchuck. Mario spins around and gets launched into orbit. No word on whether you can use the remote as a plunger. Also blasting its way onto the Wii is Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Right away, we were impressed by the intuitive aiming that the control setup allows. Blasting aliens is a breeze. Just point at your target and fire. You can use the Wii controller for additional features, like a motion-sensitive grappling hook that allows you to grab and move objects, or the ability to open and close door latches by turning the remote. But the game that was the most fun to pick up and play was WarioWare Smooth Moves. Like other titles starring Mario's greedy counterpart, this is a collection of bizarre mini-games. Each one introduces a different way to hold the remote-like controller. Place it in your palm for a balancing mini-game. Or hold it like a sword to slice up barrels. Or even use it as a hula hoop. And this was just a small taste of what's to come. We'll have a lot more info on all things Wii when the system launches later this year. You know, with everyone talking about the Wii and the PlayStation 3 and even the 360, it's easy to forget about that little handheld that's been taking care of our portable gaming needs for the last two years. Chris and Hull has been sleuthing around the Nintendo booth learning about what's new on the DS. Let's see what she's found. I'm here at the massive Nintendo booth where the Nintendo DS is trying desperately not to be overshadowed by the Wii. So let's check out what the DS is packing. Link is completing the console trifecta by appearing in The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. The game is a continuation of the story of Wind Waker, and it sticks to the cell-shaded look. The stylus is used to slash enemies, chart paths for your trusty sailboat, and guide your boomerang to specific targets. Phantom Hourglass will be coming to the DS soon. Fox, McCloud, and crew are finally landing on Nintendo's dual screen Star Fox DS. Lilat needs help, again. And it's up to you to pilot the R-Wing through various missions. The game is rendered in full 3D, and it looks great. The mean green eating machine Yoshi is starring in Yoshi's Island 2. This sequel to the Super NES classic has Yoshi escorting baby Mario, baby Peach, and baby Donkey Kong as they try to rescue the other babies who were kidnapped from the local school. The colorful graphics and throwback gameplay should be enough to keep you satisfied when the game comes out at the end of the year. With the games that Nintendo is showing this year, it appears that the stranglehold that the DS has on the portable market is not going to loosen up anytime soon. That's it for now. Back to you guys. Oh, I thank you, Kristen. Now, Olivia, mm -hmm. I often find myself confused. You know, I want to learn about the latest tech and the newest mm -hmm. games and those disturbing little pieces of pop culture that can only really be found on the interwebs. You know, well, all that can be found each and every day with G4's Daily Nuts. What? That's right. We pour over the web to find all the best stuff, then we serve it straight up to you. Weird websites, fun new viral videos. The Daily Nut is the best way to find out everything that's happening on the net. That's right. You can only get it online. Just log on to G4TV.com or on iTunes. You can download G4's Daily Nut. Also, I want to say today, I checked the numbers. I think we're in like the top 10 or the top 20. Not top bad. Top 10 or top 20? We deserve to be number one. It's every day. It's good download. It is. It's Good hard work. Oh, calm down. Sorry, sorry about it's that. It's not that Pills. big of a deal. Pills. All right, you know what's really nuts? Leaving during this commercial yeah. break. <laughs> you like yeah, that? You know, I'm just willing to forget that was ever said. So am I. I could really, I could really use the break though. If we could go to that, and I'll vlog it this way. All right, don't leave. Do not leave. Up next, we'll sit down with the big dog at Sega. No, not the little blue guy. And later on, we're going deep with Splinter Cell Double Agent. Back there. <laughs> Welcome back to E3 06 
GeForce Live presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. Now, GeForce Insider Report on the largest video game event in the world. Yes, each year the major companies and, well, the minor ones too, converge on Los Angeles for a week of hype that doesn't end until gamers are damp with anticipation. Speaking of being oddly damp, let's check in with Adam <laughs> Sessler. No, 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 I'm vaguely moist, vaguely moist. Well, thank you, Morgan. And to clarify, you know, I am moist. Now, Sega hasn't been a player in the console wars for quite some time, but they continue to feed existing consoles with endlessly addictive games. We've now got FaceTime with the man at the company's helm, Simon Jeffrey. Sega's top man in America, Simon Jeffrey, began his career in Electronic Arts before moving on to Virgin Interactive. Before joining Sega, Simon Jeffrey was president of LucasArts, where he forged new relationships with external developers such as Raven Software, The Collective, and BioWare. Since joining Sega in early 2005, Jeffrey has been actively recruiting Western developers to not only develop new franchises for Sega, but to also work with classic Sega icons. So far, Western developers have paid off for Jeffrey, with both Full Auto and Condemned making a big splash on the Xbox 360. Jeffrey and Sega announced a variety of next-gen titles at E3. Thank you very much for joining us, Simon. Thank um, you. Let's kick things off. Um, as, as you just saw in the, in the tape there, um, with Full Auto and Condemned, those are two games that no one, if I went back in the time machine five years ago, would believe would actually be coming out of Sega. Are you finding it hard to sort of both maintain the traditional image of Sega with, with, with titles that are much more mature and much more Western like that? Well, I think at Sega, it's safe to say that we're pretty excited about working on original games, and Sega's always worked on original games. Um, whilst we've got a big catalogue of back products like Sonic and Super Monkey Ball and things like that, at the same time, what makes Sega different from everyone else is doing new stuff. And Condemned and Flordo at that time on the 360 felt like new games, very different from what anyone else was doing and really fits in with our plans. Now, so, so how, much, how would you say that you're almost trying to refashion the image of Sega? Sega was once the counterpart to Nintendo, a very Japanese company with some very identifiable games. What is Sega's new image? Sega, I guess, is more contemporized now, um, really fits in with today's gamer, uh, whether that gamer be on Nintendo, on PlayStation, on 360, or on handhelds or PC, really trying to fit in with uh, the whole games for everyone ethic. All right, well, let's talk about some of those games. Um, you, uh, well, I remember back in the old days, Peter Moore was the man who declared Sega to be console agnostic when, yep. when they decided to put down the Dreamcast. Yep. Um, what are you finding happening with your relationship with the three companies? Are you favoring one over another? Is, you know, how, how are you putting your games into various hands on various consoles? Well, we've got great relationships with all of those guys. Um, having Peter up at Microsoft is very interesting for Sega, obviously. So I can imagine. Great personality um, attraction there. Um, but. Being a Japanese company, we work very well with Sony, very strongly with Nintendo. Um, but we also like to think of ourselves not just as platform agnostic, but also territory agnostic. So we're building games in the West for the West, in Europe for Europe, in America for Europe, um, and in Japan for the whole world. Well, let's go back to, to, to some of the classic fran Sega franchises, most namely Sonic. Um, critically, it's had some, some rough rise with the mm -hmm. latest game. Shadow, Sonic Riders didn't really hit home. Are, are, are people kind of going back and looking at what can we do with such a powerful piece of intellectual property? Well, this year is Sonic's 15th birthday, and so I think everyone at Sega has really been uh, looking in the mirror, looking at what Sonic came, from, where Sonic came from, what Sonic represents to gamers. Because when people played Sonic on Genesis 15 years ago, that was everyone. That was the hardcore gamers as well as the kids. But Sonic kind of became a kids brand in the last few years. So games like Sonic Riders and Shadow the Hedgehog very much been oriented towards the kids market. Now what we're seeing with the next generation Sonic the Hedgehog, we're going back, reinventing Sonic bringing back the values that made Sonic cool 15 years ago, doing the same thing over and over again. So I think if you've seen it, everyone who's seen it here will agree, the fantastic graphics, real next-gen gameplay, it's a very taking, it, taking game. it back to where it came from originally. Um, going back to, to your previous job over at LucasArts, I mean, if, if you think about it, you, you've really worked with a lot of pre-existing intellectual property, mm -hmm. especially over there. And you talking about the idea of trying to create new titles, were, were you yourself becoming a little bit fatigued of having to work with someone else's property and, and all their rules? Well, I've always been a big Star Wars fanboy. Working at LucasArts was an absolute dream come true for me. Um, and moving to Sega, well, I guess, was the next progression from that because it's, it's a bigger sandbox. What's happening at LucasArts, I think, is fantastic. The, the games, the Star Wars games that are being built at the moment, the best in the company's history. 
Um, and now I'm really excited about being able to try and do the same kind of thing at Sega. Yes, definitely. And then and get a, you know, a sequel to Nights Out, and I'll, I'll love you even more. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Simon. Okay. Now I have to hand things back over to Morgan Olivia, because if I don't, we get letters. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. I actually shudder to think about how many of those letters are from our nation's finest correctional institutions. It's best not to. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come back, we train the giant magnifying glass that is E306 live back on the show floor. And we try our best to set a booth mascot on fire. It's going to be fun. Stick around. Can I do that? Yeah. When we come back, more E306 madness, exclusive games, and booth babes. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. And I have noticed a disturbing amount of yak fur in the green room. That was you, I guess, huh? That is me. I'm sorry yeah. about that. I'm a little ill. We've shown you how the <laughs> Nintendo's Wii innovative controls are poised to revolutionize gaming, but how easy it to actually pick up and play? Is it easy? We don't know. Well, Olivia does, because she's got yeah. a special floor report from the Nintendo booth. Hey, guys. All right. All week long, we've heard about the Nintendo Wii and how you have to play it to believe it. Well, I am here at Super Mario Galaxy because I want to believe. You know, I may not have as much gaming experience as the average geek, but that actually makes me the target audience for the Nintendo Wii. This thing is actually pretty cool. These controllers are actually really solid. I thought they would be a lot lighter, but they actually have a nice heaviness to them. Okay, so I'm gonna use the left hand nunchuck move to move Mario around, and A to jump. All right, check this out. I aim the remote at the screen, and it gives me a pointer that I can interact with different objects. All right, now I'm going to head over to this other planet, so I'm gonna point the remote to the star icon, and then waggle just a little bit. Mario in space. That's what I've always wanted. I like this game. It's fun, it's intuitive, and you know, best of all, it actually feels like a Mario game. So, you know, I'm just gonna keep on playing and uh, leave, you know, leave you guys in the capable hands of Mr. Kevin Ferreira. Kevin, take it away. All right, thanks, Olivia. Now, E3 wasn't built in a day. No, no, my friends. It's been around for years, always on the forefront of gaming technology. To put this year's expo in context, we have the final chapter in our ongoing exploration of E3's past. It's another year and another E3. We're here to bring you all the breakthroughs in personal entertainment heading our way in the 80s. That's right, Adam. The year is 1982, and the future's so day-glow, We'll have to wear Ray-Ban. Lots of big stories this year, Kevin. Now, arcade cabinets, they are still king, but is the Atari 5200 or the ColecoVision gonna be the future of gaming? And let's not forget advances in graphics, huh? Will the lifelike experience of Gorf best innovative gameplay like Frogger? Hmm. Well, first, let's head to the convention floor where our correspondent Morgan Webb waits to report on a serious affliction. Thanks, Adam. People on the floor have, like, a fever. Can you guess what kind? Any guesses? Scarlet fever? Okay, it's Pac-Man fever. People, like, cannot seem to get enough of the little yellow guy. And he's so cute, right? Now, as you know, Pac-Man 1 was, like, one of the best things that has ever happened. It was truly one of the most fully realized gaming experiences I've ever had. Then there was Ms. Pac-Man, and she brought the series to new heights of brilliance. And now, the original is, like, back with Pac-Man Plus, and everyone down here is going, like, totally insane for it. Fantastic news, Morgan. That's one game that will never stop being great. Now, if Namco gets a new Pac-Man out for the Astrocade, they're gonna have a winner on their hands. Yeah, we've also got another report from Morgan Webb with the best graphics 1982 has to offer. That's right, Kevin. Did, did you just change out of that Pac-Man costume? Hello, it's the 80s. Women are empowered now. Anyway, the big story here is graphics. We are entering a brave new world of photorealistic video games. Witness the mind-blowing spectacle of pole position. Coming up after the break, E.T. the video game. Yes. It's a fantastic yes, movie, so the game's got to be great, too, right? And get this, Starcade, a TV show about video games? How long is that fag going to last? <laughs> All that after this. We'll have more E306 live right after this, but to find out exactly what we have in store for you, you'll just have to wait. Or 
where you can listen to the following disembodied voice. Coming up, our hands-on demo with the new Splinter Cell game, Double Agent. And after that, why, Booth Babes, of course. E306 Live is presented by Scion. presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I'm Olivia Munn on your television set right now. And I am Morgan Webb. Now pace yourselves and breathe deeply because we've got so much more for you. You might get a little bit overwhelmed. Yes, with so much breaking news and information coming out of E3, it would take a superhuman effort to gather it all. Luckily, we took yeah. a normal newscast, hit it with gamma radiation, and turned it into all the E3 news you need to know. It's the incredible feed. Hey, you. Yes, you. I'm Layla Cayley with all the breaking E3 news you need. Oh, yeah. I call it the feed. Buena Vista has been known as a minor player, but it's making a play for the big leagues at this year's E3. They'll be drawing heavily on Walt Disney franchises for its kids' games like Meet the Robinsons and Kim Possible. The company will also roll out a Turok first-person shooter and Every Extent Extra, an original title developed in Japan. In other Disney news, strap on your peg leg. The game Pirates of the Caribbean, The Legend of Jack Sporaman, is being released alongside the big screen sequel, Dead Man's Chest. What's next? An amusement park ride? That's all for the news for now. Keep it tuned to G4 for E3 headlines throughout the day and visit us on the web at g4tv.com. Until next time, I'm Layla Cayley, and I hope you're not hungry because you've been fed, yo. If you want more feed, you can have it because it's all on the new g4tv.com. That's where you'll find the feed and all of the action from here at E3. Games, games, and more games. Plus, there's The Pile, G4's broadband channel filled with thousands of exclusive videos, some that are too hot even for G4 TV. G4TV.com. It's everything you want when you want it. Log on to G4TV.com. All right, now I know you all are anxiously awaiting the fourth installment of the Splinter Cell series. But before it gets to you, it has to go through me. This could get messy. I'm about to go hands-on with Splinter Cell Double Agent. All right, well, joining me now is Julian Garrity. This is Splinter Cell's co-producer and playing the game. is senior game designer, and this is Chris Smith. Welcome to the both of you. Uh, yeah, Chris, hello. get it cracking on this game. Everybody wants to take a look at it. And Julian, um, let's just get the backstory. This is Sam Fisher's in prison. This is, this is a little different. Sam Fisher's in prison, but that's a cover story. Oh. Sam Fisher's in prison because he has to infiltrate a terrorist cell. So he's created a backstory of being a bank robber, He's in prison to meet up with his contact. He meets up with his contact, and they decide to break out of prison together. So they cause a riot, and that's playable. Wow, you, you can actually play a riot. It's going to be better it. than State of Emergency, I imagine. Uh, yeah, I, right, hope so. I, I hope so, too. So um, th throughout the game, he has, to maintain most of, he has to maintain his cover. He has to maintain his cover throughout the whole game. The only r rule around is not blowing your cover. And this presents, and a lot of people talk about the, these, these moral choice segments of the game that are, that are, that are very dark, from what mm. I saw, where you almost, well, you can or cannot kill a person in cold blood. Mm. Um, how do they work, and how do they affect the game? Okay, the moral choices were something that we wanted to do because they represent double agent for us. And at several moments in the game, we're gonna ask you a question. Would you kill this innocent person if you could save 3,000 people down the line? Would you kill your best friend? Oh yeah, that's a lightweight one, yeah. Yeah, of course I would. No, no, I don't, I don't know if I could. And, I, and you use the animator from the triplets of Belleville to yeah. actually really make this a very, almost like yeah. upsetting experience. I was, I, I really found it difficult to look at, I have to say. And that's just the first choice in the game. Mm -hmm. And the consequences of those choices are remarkable. Multiple parts and different endings at the end of the game. All right, well, let's take a look at also what's being played right now. Obviously, graphically, this thing is taking the big push. Um, what is the technology that you're using behind this? It's an uh, Unreal Engine, modified, heavily modified. Yeah, uh, it's got all the bells and whistles that you've come to expect from uh, the, the next generation of video games. So you've got HDI, you've got... Uh, you've got volumetric lighting, you've got everything in that game that you could ask for in the next-gen title. 
Wow. Um, is, is, is the game still as stealthy as the previous versions? Have you, have you tried to you know, um, increase the action in any way? Well, what we've done is it's still a stealth game, but because he's a double agent, he's going to be in situations like war-torn Africa, where there's going to be a lot of, uh, lot of different... A lot of gunplay. A lot or? of gunplay. Okay, oh, hold on, hold on. I believe what I'm seeing here is that Sam Fisher is swimming. That's right. And then, then this First is new. Time ever. Sam Fisher is a swimmer. I knew he had it in him. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of him. Um, wh what are the other new moves in the game? Is there anything well, else? Well, you know, he's uh, doing skydiving for the first time ever. He's uh, swimming. He's going to be in situations he's never been in before. He, he sounds more extreme in this game. Skydiving. Uh, extreme, extreme stealth could be a good way to put yeah, it. Yes, but he's not going to wear those obnoxious, bright, vibrant colors. Um, what, are, what, what is about how long is the game and what is sort of like the, the other settings that, that we're going to find here? Well, we're going to have uh, levels in Shanghai, in New York, in Kinshasa, in Africa, in Okosk, in Iceland, lots and lots of different levels. Is it safe to say that this game is going to be significantly darker than, it is. than the previous it's, versions? It's more mature, darker. I think we're dealing with some themes that have never even been dealt before in uh, video games in general. Now, um, one, one thing I've always wanted to ask you, that in the case of, 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 of stealth games, that sometimes they are slower games and can sometimes bring down the gameplay experience. Mm. Okay, I've had to do that over again. I just got caught. And just to get to that point that you were once at, you know, you're moving very slowly. Has this ever been a concern for you when trying to, to design a game it, like this? It's definitely a concern and a concern that I feel was addressed by Chaos Theory in the large part with the save system. And then this is something that we're trying to do here. Uh, we're trying to avoid that moment of game over. You know, letting you play, letting you catch up with your mistakes, but not letting you die on a random basis and starting over and over and over again. And how are the objectives set up in each level? Are, 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 are they varied? Are, are there certain ones you have to do, some, some that you don't have to? Again, double agent for us meant putting dual sets of objectives in the game. One from the terrorists, one from the NSA. You don't have to do all of them, but some of them will be critical. Can you actually do both NSA and can you do uh, terrorist objectives? If, if you're really, really good, that's the trick. And is one of the NSA objectives uh, paying off AT&T so they can get everyone's phone number? No, no, we're, we've looked into that oh, one. Oh, I'm sorry, that's oh. just the actual news. Okay. And this is a great move oh, here. Oh, let's look at this. That we've never seen before. And... Just snap his neck. Oh, yeah, so tasteful, so tasteful. Thank you so much, Julian, and thank you for playing us through this, Chris. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game. Okay, I am now going to direct the cameras over to where and Olivia and Morgan are standing. Because I can. E3 isn't just a place for gaming and technology news. It's also a lush vineyard of scantily clad female marketing representatives. Yes, down in the trenches doing the dirty work of researching this meaty topic as our own Zach Selwyn. Yes, it's a jungle out here, but like a wolf, I'm always on the prowl to bring you the hottest booth, babe of E3. Now, you need to decide if I made the right pick. So log on to g4tv.com slash E3 and make your voice heard. In the meantime, hi girls. Are you guys all sharing an apartment together? This would be a reality show I'd watch. Um, we can if you'd like us to, if you pay for the rent. 1620 North Harper Avenue, Hollywood, California, 90048. Now, what are you going to say to the fans who vote for you as the hottest booth, babe, because you kind of look like a poor man's Olivia Munn? Uh, everything is go. Now, what does Unleash the Fury mean to you? Unleash the Fury to kick some ass. Can I say that? Yes, this is G4. This is like HBO. Usually when a man is sitting on the throne thinking of ladies, he's sitting on the toilet reading a Playboy. Or a hustler. Do not deny hustler. Do you guys think you're two of the hottest booth babes uh, at E3 this year? No? You obviously saw my grandmother over at the PSP booth in the mini skirt. All right, I am standing here with one of the hottest, tastiest booth babes of E3 so far. How you doing? Actually, I'm not a booth babe, and I have to get back to work. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, you know, I've chosen 10. They're online. Log on. Vote for your favorite. We'll have the winner tomorrow. D4TV.com slash E3. I can get you a job. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, after the break, we've got more E3 06 Live. At this point, there really is no reason to change the channel. Doing it would 
Pretty much just be a pathetic cry for attention, and that's just annoying. Stardate next. Our mission is to explore the new Star Trek Legacy game. And later, we'll have lots more from the mad geniuses at LucasArts. Presented by Scion and Mountain Dew, I'm Olivia Munn, and we are back with G4's exclusive inside look at the world's biggest video gaming event. Yes, and I am Adam Sessler. This expo draws all the epic names from the gaming industry, but it also brings out some people you might not expect. Here with his own take on E3 is G4 special correspondent, Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> Austin Phoenix named me the unsexiest man in the world. Me, the star of Problem Child 2 and House Party 3. Me. Well, here I am at E3, the geek mecca of the universe. I'm bound to find someone less sexy than me. throw an ensemble like this together. Do you ever think about your life and want to kill yourself? I gotta be more sexy than these guys. You know, I've been told that you and I look alike. Dear God, please say it's not true. Yeah. I would go out with you. Yeah? The sad thing is, is I'd say yes. Now I'm doing a survey to find out what sexy is. Do you get a lot of women this way? Pretty much somebody that is like, you look at them and you are like, oh my God, mm, I can't resist it. Do you do that when you look at me? Are there any less sexier men here than me? Uh, yeah, definitely. What's your sexiest body part? Uh, well, I, I don't carry it around with me. You don't? Unfortunately. Well, you don't smell. Yes. <laughs> That's the nicest thing a woman's ever said to me. At least you don't smell. You're better than 99 of the guys they put on that list. Oh, that's nice. So, uh, so I'm <laughs> sexier than Osama bin Laden? <laughs> I have nothing to say, but can you just kind of move the camera up and down? <laughs> I missed it the first time. Well, we've been looking at nothing but hot-looking, sexy young babes, so I thought I'd do something as a buzzkill. <laughs> what do you like better, people or video games? I like video games better than people. People. I don't know, that's a toss-up. Too many games, no time to get laid. I'd probably say video games, because you can turn them off. You don't have to hit a constant yap. Well, I've been with a bunch of girls. I can't turn them on. Gilbert is an inspiration to small, whiny men the world around. But Adam, what is whining but a form of complaining? And what is complaining but commentary soaked in attitude? Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. if you like your commentary overflowing with attitude, you're in luck. It's time for the Morgan Minute. Start the clock. The Wii. We've had some time with it. We've seen the games. We've held the controller. And we now have to ask, can we ever get past the name? Will you ever be comfortable saying, I sure love playing with my Wii, or I have to go Wii? It feels cute and dirty at the same time, which is a problem. And Nintendo had a great name before, Revolution. That's not cute, it's bracing and vaguely warlike. Makes me feel like I need to put on a red scarf and help my friends put the Xbox in a guillotine. But I guess Nintendo can only be a badass a little bit at a time. And that's the point, isn't it? It's Nintendo. Did we ever expect anything from them but singing mushrooms and games about pet grooming? When you've built an empire out of adorable, maybe we makes the sense. I will feel stupid saying we. Yes, really dumb, but I'll get over it. In the past two days, I've realized it may be a revolution in gaming, but when I play, all I really think is we. By the way, that's been a minute, and I've been Morgan. Sure have. Thanks, Morgan. Now, new Star Trek video games are met with a kind of intense fan excitement, usually reserved for something like, uh, well, actually usually reserved for anything else labeled Star Trek. And these people are easily worked up, but in this case, their enthusiasm, it seems to be well-deserved because I'm getting a hands-on with Star Trek Legacy. <laughs> Joining me now is Ian Davis, CEO of Mad Dog Software. Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, Star Trek, ships flying around in space. 
What are you going to do with this game? It's a, it's an RTS. Is there going to be space battles? What are we teleporting? What's happening? Well, the thing about Star Trek Legacy is that uh, it's the third Star Trek game I've worked on. And when we set about designing this one, I said, we need to design the ultimate Star Trek experience. So what we did was we didn't say, oh, here's a genre of game and let's put Star Trek on it. We said, let's build combat from the ground up the way you would see it in the TV show and the movies. Ah, OK, all right. So we're seeing a space battle taking place here. If, if you're saying this is the ultimate Star Trek experience, I'm assuming it has to span all the generations of Star Trek. Oh, yeah, this is the first game that's ever done that. We go from the Archer era, the Enterprise era, through original series, and through Next Generation and beyond. We've got every ship of all the major races in the game. So can I, like, uh, can I pit the Enterprise E-Class versus like the Horizon, or uh, do you have to stick to a specific time? In the single-player campaign, we have a Federation campaign that goes from the beginning to the end, and you take your fleet the whole way through it, upgrading it, replacing ships when you think you want to. But in multiplayer and skirmish, you can have anyone against anyone. Wait, OK, upgrading. So I can actually customize my ships as I'm taking them through battle? Oh, yeah, yeah. What you want to do is between battles, you say, you know, I need better phasers. So you go and you spend some of your points you've earned on phasers, and then then you stoke up the shields, and then after a couple of battles, you're like, oh, but there's a shiny new Constitution class up uh, there. Tell me, can I put racing stripes and spinners on my Galileo 7? Is that going to be possible? Well, for you. We'll okay, good, good. Just give me, give me a mod. Give yeah, me something in there. A special mod for Kevin. I love it. Now, now uh, resource management is always a big part of these games. Tell me you've eliminated it. What's going on with actually managing resources? Well, we actually have, in this game, it's not as much of a real-time strategy game as a fleet naval combat game. Huh. So your resource management only happens between the battles, where the results of what happened in the previous battles give you command points that you can spend on upgrading your ships. So we wanted to go with the ultimate Star Trek realism. You can't build a sovereign class ship in 30 seconds. Sure. Now, now what about the online aspect of this? I know it's, you know, we're, we're on Xbox Live. What yeah. can we do when we're actually trash talking with other Trekkies out there? You know, the single player game is, uh, is great. It's, it's we designed it for a, an amazing campaign, but in the multiplayer, it's where you really start taking off. So, I mean, there's nothing quite like having your friends fighting and then coming up on them in a board cube and assimilating their butts. Right. You're not disappointed that it's not on the Wii, so you can't do the Captain Picard hands and have to be motion sensitive, right? Uh, well, at this point, you know, we haven't committed to that yet. Okay, good to hear. Well, everybody's going to keep an eye out for it. Star Trek Legacy, coming out when? Coming out this fall. All right, sounds good, Ian. Thank you so much right, for coming thanks, on. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, everybody, let's return to the woman I think of as my Tasha Yar. Really, it's the highly deadly Olivia Munn. Thanks, Kevin. It seems like you've uh, set your phasers to charming. If you guys like to learn more about the Breen or Dilithium crystals, you can always watch Star Trek 2.0 on G4. Star Trek 2.0 allows you, the viewer at home, to interact with the classic series. Catch it every weeknight at 11 p.m. right here on G4. Tune in and prosper. Well, you know what? We have so much more E306 live left to go. Well, you might as well go. go. We've gone through an entire hour here, and we want to know which things have gotten your heart racing. Let's check out the Heat Index. Yes, first up is the line of games from the House of Sonic. We're talking about Sega, and you said it was scorching. scorching. I like Chrome Hound. I gotta say, Chrome that game, that is a good-looking, fun-looking game. Now, you know, he, he said it best when he was on here. He said, look, you know, Sonic was appealing to the kiddies. Now we're trying to get it older. Do you think that might be hurting the overall rating here, the fact that they, they have been skewing younger with the Sonic franchise? Well, it's also they don't have that kind of humdinger. I mean, they had condemned to full auto last year, but they don't have that one that's really standing out for the rest of the pack. That's Very what I true. would say. And then how did you herald the return of Sam Fisher in Splinter Cell Double Agent? Well, you said it was volcanic. Of course. It looked... Absolutely amazing. It? And it's just also, if you if you get a chance to find the sequence when you have to make the big moral decision yeah. whether or not to shoot this person, oh. it's one of the most intense things I've ever seen in the game. Absolutely. I mean, it's very upsetting. Well, they're trying to play up how realistic it looks. So, you know, you're not really shooting a cartoonish figure anymore. No. You're actually shooting somebody. It might be someone's brother. Oh, murder and trading. I yes. love it. Violence with some kind of cost. That's, that's, that's progress, people. Yes. And, of course, there's Star Trek Legacy. Did enough truckies manage to get online in time? Well, according to you, it ranks as warm. Oh, I'm, you know what? I, I'm a sucker for this kind of thing. I'm going to play it. Everybody teases me around the office because I grew up on Star <laughs> Trek Next Generation. I'm sorry, but I know every episode and every character, and Morgan, that's cool, Morgan, whatever. We tease you for a slew of other reasons. Okay, that's but I'm to going to Star play Trek. the game, yeah, so whatever. I, I, you know, maybe you had the Tasha Yar haircut. It was once sexy, but it's now just like, okay, <laughs> no, practical. Thanks. No, thank you. All right.
Here's what Guitar Siren said about Splinter Cell. This game looks great, and the new Choose Your Own Path option will hopefully add to the experience. I can't wait. I'm right there with them. Can't wait. wait. Yeah. All right, if you didn't like the results of the Heat Index, then do something about it. Get over to G4TV.com slash E3 and vote for what's coming up in the next hour. Or, as always, you can text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. Yeah, go vote for Star Trek. And now we move from the heat index to something truly cold-blooded. Yes, yes. In case the last five Bruce Willis movies haven't driven the point home enough, bald men are capable of extremely violent acts. Yes, Hitman, the franchise that taught us the joys of strangling people with little pieces of wire. Oh, well, it's coming to the Xbox 360. Pull on your black leather gloves and take in the premiere of Hitman Blood Money. You think he's more than a man? I tell you, he's less. A virus. A pestilence. Whose existence we only notice by the death it leaves behind. He kills for money. It's that simple. That grotesque. He's due for a taste of his own medicine. And I'm the man that's gonna shove it down his throat. Any mission could be a setup at this point. All right, we're here in the heart of E3, bringing you exclusive coverage of all the biggest games. You know, we are too kind to you. Yeah, really are. joining the channel will anger the spirits of your ancestors. Don't do it unless you've got a whole lot of holy water and lip balm at your disposable. We'll have lots more from Sony and that irrepressible Tony Montana in the Scarface game in the next hour. Stay tuned. Oh, now, now the roof is all lopsided. Oh, well, we'll burn it down. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome back to E306 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew and my belt buckle. I'm Kevin Pereira, <laughs> the illegitimate son you always wanted. Aw, and I'm Olivia Munn, the ex-girlfriend who still hangs out with your mom and all of your friends. Seriously, Even stop it. It's over. She and I are friends. Continue. All right, E3 isn't the only thing going on at G4. We're also excited about the launch of our show, Filter. Yes, yes, this is great. Filter is hosted by the smoking hot Beth Ostrowski. Mm. It's a very own twisted version of a countdown show. It's fast and fun and unpredictable, like me in bed. <laughs> but it's a little bit off center. Really, Kevin? Little bit. Little bit. All right, Filter's new season kicks off with the 21 most legendary party Saturday, June 3rd at 7 p.m. only here on G4. And Betho is here tomorrow, Adam. I'm sorry, I just had to say it. All right, she is here tomorrow. Yes. I, th I think you're chatting with her. I am. Mm. Lucky. Mm. What's that? What's that, a plea for mercy? <laughs> I laugh at your inability to handle this much insider information. And we're not <laughs> stopping. We're gonna plunge our noses into a heaping pile of Scarface, talk to the grand moth of LucasArts, and spin webs with Spider-Man's daddy, the one and only Stan Lee. Yes, the actual Stan Lee. Yes. There is no time to prepare yourself for hour three because it starts right now. To get the lowdown on what superpower Sony has up its sleeve, check out the action-packed new title Scarface and spend some time with comic book genius Stan Lee. G4 and Attack of the Show present E306 Live. Standing strong. Standing strong. I don't trust that guy right back there, though. I don't trust him. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to E306 yes. Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I'm still Kevin Pereira, believe it or not. And I gotta be honest, I'm impressed with my own stamina. I am too, Kevin. Thank you. And I'm Olivia Munn, and we are covering the gaming industry's biggest event like no one else can. The show and floor is a sea of insiders, outsiders, and swag hunters like my brother and cousins who are here. And we're talking to them all. That's right. We've got first look game premieres, exclusive interviews with the gaming industry's best and brightest, and hands on demos of the biggest new games. It's three hours of live insider coverage. You're not getting anywhere else, mm -mm. but right here on the G4. 
yeah. That's where they're getting it. But of course, you can't call yourself a true gamer unless you hang out with G4's resident experts from X-Play. Yes, they're like a next-gen J-Lo and Mark Anthony. Oh. They're Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler. Yikes. Thanks, guys. Now, I will ignore uh, the disturbing analogy. No, I kind of like that one for me, anyway. But we can't ignore all the great games that are literally spilling out of the doors of the LA Convention Center. We still have yet to check out what LucasArts has brought to the table. And later on, Morgan gets her hands on Scarface. Mm -hmm. But before all that, our field agents are doing what they do best, standing in front of booths, gesturing at cool things. It's hard. Trust us. It sounds easier than it is. Yeah. Let's find out what Zach Selwyn has for us. Thanks, Adam. In just a second, I'm going to talk to Mr. Blonde himself, Michael Madsen, about the Reservoir Dogs video game. Kristen, what's up? Thanks, Zach. Coming up this hour, I'll be at Square Enix, and we're talking Final Fantasy. But right now, let's go back to the stage and check in with Kevin and Olivia. All right, thanks, Kristen. Now, listen, folks, seriously, I understand. I know that we are throwing a lot at you. Mm -hmm. We know, so it's probably hard to really keep track of it all. Yeah, all right. Let us help you process your feelings about E3. Log on to G4TV.com slash E3 and check out the Heat Index. That's where you can tell us which E3 announcement or debut has most excited you. Yes, or you can text your opinion to G4TXT. That's 44898 to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. We'll be checking out the Heat Index every hour and reading your comments on air, so make them entertaining. Seriously, she likes to giggle. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. There See? it is. All right, now let's check back in with Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. If you like violence, you'll like what they have in store. If you like <laughs> violence, thank you, Olivia. Back in the day when the PlayStation 1 was the pinnacle of gaming, we did a great deal of pixelated damage with a little title called Warhawk. Mm -hmm. Well, those pixels have been smooth, and it's about to make its triumphant next-gen return. We have an extreme close-up for, for Warhawk on the PlayStation 3. Yes, you too can now fly the friendly skies in your very own futuristic jet fighter. What more could you ask for? When Warhawk for the PS3 made its E3 debut last year, it turned a lot of heads thanks to seriously eye-popping graphics. But unlike a lot of trailers you've seen, the new footage from Warhawk is almost entirely gameplay. And we're loving the view. But of course, we already knew that the game was going to be pretty. The big news this year was the revelation that it would take advantage of Sony's new directional sensing controller. Dylan Job of Incognito Studios came up on stage during Sony's press conference to demonstrate the game's compatibility with the new controller. Now, we have to admit this may look a little silly. Okay, a lot silly, but we're sure steering with the new peripheral is a lot of fun. It turns out that this isn't a sequel after all, but a complete reimagining of the original game. We've also learned that there will be tank and jeep combat, although it wasn't shown in the newly released footage at E3. But hey, it just gives us something to look forward to. And we'll be doing a lot of that since Warhawk doesn't have a firm release date yet. Hurry it up, Sony. I need to get my pilot's license. You know, at the press conference, uh, Mr. Job was not very good at it. Yeah, I mean, it may look like it was an exhausting game. It was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and he didn't really hit any of the ships, and his landing was terrible. Yes, no, it was funny. I, I played it at the booth, and the motion sensitivity thing yeah. was, it was, it was available. And you could, almost similar to the Wii, you could move it with a lot of, you know, very subtle movements. It because was he fun. was really going for yeah. the, I, and it I might imagine have been it theatrics. Works, but yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, that's the point. I think what's going to really work for this game yeah. is that there are other things. There are tanks, there's shooting, there's all, the, all that stuff. If you're going to lean that whole game on the motion sensitivity of that controller, I think you get really tired of it really, really It fast. would do a disservice to the game because it's going to have a lot more going on in there. Yes. Well, yes. okay. I like yes. to see Kevin and Olivia top that for excitement. <laughs> this isn't a contest, Adam, unless there's money involved, in which case I will taste their blood. Tastes like chocolate. Oh, oh. Mm. oh bring it, woman. You oh. will try and fail, Webb. Seriously. Hot. Now, with so much talk about the PlayStation 3, it's easy to forget about Sony's other products. Oh, Blu-ray DVD players? Oh, God, no, 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 no. Oh. I'm not touching that whole debacle. No, I'm talking about the PlayStation 2 and the PSP, oh. you know? Yeah. Zach's got another floor report right from the Sony booth. Oh, and guess when it's happening? Right now? That's it. <gasps> hey, what's
what's up? I'm back here at the Sony booth bringing you information on all things Sony that you need to know. Now, we've already gone over the PS3. Let's dive in to see what Sony's offering as far as the PS2 and the PSP is concerned. Check it out! On a planet far, far away, a damn good adventure takes place. Rogue Galaxy takes things to outer space, that fictional place those fictional astronauts visited in those fictional 60s. The good news? The space action looks cool. The real good news, Hayden Christensen's not involved whatsoever. The planetary wars continue with the scruffiest twosome since Tony and Carmella. Ratchet and Clank, Size Matters, brings a whole new adventure to the PSP for the metrosexual twosome. And the action takes them throughout the wonderful world of space. And Size Matters isn't a port. It's all new for the PSP. See this game? It's called Loco Roco or loco roco, if you know how to use an accent. A blob takes over and tries to eat its way through the world. But enough about Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's crazy, it's wacky, it's addictive, and it's fun. But again, enough about Philip Seymour Hoffman. This one is gonna be a big one. Impressive, most impressive. In fact, maybe even too impressive, as it should be. That's it for me, Zach, here at the Sony booth. Let's go back to Kevin and Olivia. Thanks, Zach. Man, I love that guy. He's so dreamy. He is Those dreamy. Those eyes. We could talk about him for days. <laughs> but let's not. Oh, let's not. But, you know, I don't know about you, Kev, but I need a break. Seriously, we can chat then. Okay. That's it. When have you known me to refuse a break? Seriously, I'm a thin shell of a person <laughs> over here. You are so thin. After the break, we'll interview the head of LucasArts, and later we'll check in with the guys from Square. Cheers. Welcome back, everybody. It's E306 Live. I'm Kevin Pereira, and I'll be acting as your protocol droid for the rest of the hour. But right now, the force compels me to welcome gaming expert Jeff Keeley, who has something of great importance to tell us. Yes, I do. Thank you, Kevin. Well, you know, when your parent company gave birth to two of the greatest adventure franchises in movie history, Star Wars and Indiana Jones, being given the task to create games out of them is a bit like being handed the keys to a candy store. The president of LucasArts knows that feeling all too well. We've got some FaceTime with Jim Ward. LucasArts president Jim Ward is a veteran of 20 years in the marketing and entertainment business. Ward was behind the marketing campaigns for the Star Wars prequels and all the Star Wars DVDs. Star Destroyer standing by. In his two years at LucasArts, he helped launch the Star Wars video games, including Empire at War and Battlefront. Working closely with Lucasfilm and Industrial Light and Magic, Ward is helping close the gap between the worlds of films and games. Now, what could the folks over at LucasArts have in store for us? Well, here with us with the answers is Jim Ward. Jim, how are you? Good, Jeff. How are you doing, man? I'm great. Now, Good. big news over at the LucasArts booth. You've uh, announced that there's going to be a new Indiana Jones game yeah. coming out in 2007. Now, everyone's waiting for news on you know, what's happening with the movie. So you've decided, I guess this isn't sort of a, a play of the movie game, right? It has nothing to do with no, the No, absolutely. From the beginning, we weren't going to tie it to the movie. We wanted to create it a distinct experience around Indiana Jones. And look, if the movie came out around the same time, cool. If not, fine. Right. And, and it's not. So this game is actually going to be uh, the Indiana Jones experience for 2007 and hopefully re-energize a whole new generation around you know the greatest action figure there is. Now, as a veteran of sort of movie marketing, I mean, do you think, is that the right model to sort of bring games out alongside the movie? I know, you know, EA was supposed to bring out Superman alongside the movie, it, you know, Whoops. slipped, I guess, coming Whoops. out with the DVD. I yeah. mean, is that, is, that, is that a bad thing, or that's, you know, that's what, what companies should be doing? Well, no, yeah, absolutely. When you, I think we were the leaders in actually creating these media kind of events where yeah. com not only coming out with a movie, but coming out with a DVD, and that absolutely can, can help give a lot of heat out in the marketplace. But right. you know what? Um, we firmly believe that in the next couple of years, interactive gaming will be the leading edge of all entertainment. And that games themselves will be events in their own right. And certainly, if anyone deserves that, it's Indiana Jones. And we think yeah. coming out with a game in the summer of 07 will be as big an event as any of the other movies that are coming out that summer. That's fantastic. Now, you're not just doing sort of next-gen graphics on this game. You're really focusing on sort of bringing next-gen gameplay to this title. Why don't you tell us about some of the amazing things you're doing with sort of game physics and procedural animation? Yeah, a absolutely. We've, uh, we've been working for the past number of years, uh, both with Industrial Light and Magic and with some outside companies on some proprietary technologies that we're launching here today at uh, E3. Uh, the first is a, a technology called Euphoria, right. developed with a company called Natural Motion. And basically what that does 
is imbue every character in a game with a nervous system, with a brain and a nervous system. And so when Indiana Jones co-cocks somebody, right, they're right gonna, now, yeah. oh yeah, they're gonna react completely different every single time he hits them. Wow. And, and gone are the days of animation where you're tired of seeing the same three or four animations. Yeah. That's all gone. AI drives it now. Wow. And so unpredictable it's, it, game environment. Completely unpredictable wow. and, it, and it rocks and it's gonna be you know, infinite gameplay possibilities for, for players. Cool. Now let's switch to Star Wars because you've also doing you know, some new stuff with Star Wars. You've got you know, Force Commando expansion pack. You've also got uh, our Empire War expansion yeah, pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. And then also you've got uh, another big game, Lego Star Wars, which is coming out based on you know, the original trilogy. But you're also doing a new Star Wars game. We've got a preview of it. So this is using the uh, new technology. Absolutely. We've got a super... So is it going to be a Vader game? People have been sort of guessing you know, about I that. I don't know. That, that got out in the press. Uh, right. Certainly Darth Vader is going to be a part of that because it's hard not to. He is right. the guy, right? You get to but, play as Vader, though? Uh, no, no, uh, you know, it, no, uh, you don't. But okay. it's it's cooler than that because what we're basically doing is taking the concept of the Force and amping that out to, to uh, things that you've never been able to do for right. as a player. But we're also introducing with that game as well a new technology called Pixelux, which basically uh, our, our brilliant guys have created for the first time ever digital molecular matter. Right. So everything that you see is alive as if it were a real world. So, you know, in the old days, you'd break down a piece of, of wood, it would have one animation, that was it. Now you break it, no matter how you break it, it breaks as if real wood. Glass, metal, carbonite, you know, you right. name it, it's going to break as if it were in the real world. And you match up this natural motion technology right. and Pixelux, and all of a sudden, you've got real gameplay changes right. for next gen. Now I gotta ask you about you know humor though in games. You guys were sort of on the leading edge of that with you know the Monkey Island series, yeah. you know Day of the Tentacle. I grew up and loved those Lucas Arts adventure games. Are you guys ever gonna bring back those series again? Yeah, Jeff. We, you know we could do that, but you know right. what? I've challenged our guys with another thing, and that's you know what we had the glory days back then. But I said, you know, we will bring those games back in 2015 if we can develop new IP. Because right. I remind them, you ever remember well, let's get Dukes? Some fun games. Yeah. Well, you remember Dukes of Hazard yeah. and Bewitched last summer for movies? Yeah. Didn't do too well, did yeah. they? We got to come up with new ideas and fresh ideas. And once we do that, fine. Then we can bring back some of the old ideas. Because right. you know what? We can come up with better ideas than those games, and we will. Fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to seeing okay. those. Thanks for joining us, Jim. All right, Jeff. Appreciate it. All right, All back right. to uh, you, Morgan and Olivia. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Now, E306 Live is going to go away for just a few minutes, but it'll be back. Yeah, she's telling the truth. Yeah. Morgan never lies. Yep. Never. When we come back, get a peek at the new Scarface game. And later, it's comic book legend Stan Lee in the flesh, Excelsior. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to E306 Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. I'm Kevin Pereira, and i got to be honest, I haven't been this consistently giddy since I replaced my humidifier with a helium tank. Interesting, Kevin. Probably should have admitted that. No, you shouldn't have. No. Well, speaking of abusing substances, Morgan Webb would like to introduce us to her little friend. Uh -huh. Yeah, since my days as a gangster rapper, I thought Tony Montana would make one hell of a video game character. Now, I had to carve up a few communists for the chance, but I have an exclusive hands-on look at Vivendi's new Scarface game. And, and I uh, do have to say that movie was the first time I learned about Quaaludes. <laughs> Imagine asking your mom, what are quaaludes? Okay, um, so everybody wants to know about the cast. So tell us a little bit about the cast of voice acting for the game. Sure, I mean, we have a, an enormous cast, probably one of the largest ever assembled for a video game. And we actually had cast all the major roles first mm -hmm. and had you know, done a press release and you know, people like Michael Rappaport and a lot of, a lot of the people from the movie uh, were in the cast as well. But then we went back and said, all these ancillary characters, all these secondary characters that we had, normally we'd go out and get voice actors, you know, really talented people to come in do the roles, except with Scarface a little different because we had so many people uh, from the Hollywood community, actors, actresses, models, rappers, singers, sports people that mm -hmm. said, if they're doing a Scarface game, I really want to be involved in it. So we were able to open it up and all those traditional characters that you wouldn't have had, you know, yeah. Hollywood type talent for, we're now able to take and put into the role. A great example of that is we have a, a character in the game who runs Fidel's records and uh, the original description was, you know, long haired devil worshiper, record store owner. 
uh, and so we cast Tommy Lee for that. Uh -huh. It was sort of perfect. In each one of those examples, uh, we really felt that the Hollywood person that we were bringing in to do the, the role, yeah. you know, matched up with the character, right. and that's really what's most important. Yeah, so give me another couple examples. Uh, I, we have Jason Muse in the game who, uh, you know, our game has a lot of F-bombs in it, and so it's like we were trying to think of, you know, who can really deliver some F-bombs with flair? And we had a uh -huh. one particular role that r called for, you know, somebody to drop as many as Tony did, and so that was, we went out and grabbed Jason Muse, and, you know, we have Bam McGarra, and we have uh, Jillian Barbary, and, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, so, so what about Pacino? We do have, we do, did work directly with Al Pacino. Uh -huh. We have his likeness in the game. Uh, we have a, a voice actor who does a great job, handpicked by Al Pacino. Uh, and so, really, when you look at Tony, he looks like Tony, he sounds like Tony, he moves like Tony. It's Tony. Is he as sadistic as Tony? We should uh, talk maybe a little bit about the story, because, you know, the movie is dark and it's violent and it's a little bit sadistic so and, and the game is all of that yeah. as well and uh you know we view this as almost like a 40 hour uh you know scarface film uh, and it, it definitely yeah. captures the character of uh, cause didn't uh, tony montana you know die he at, does at the end he does die at the end so <laughs> what we did you know what happens in the game when you die well, you come right back to life. Okay. So if we're going to do a see the movie, play the movie, you know, 1995 license slap, we would have done that. But what we wanted to do in this game was give the player an opportunity to change the fiction, to put him in the role of Tony Montana. We open up the game at the very last scene of the film, the mansion shootout. You know, the player starts M16, grenade launcher in hand, you know, blow down the door, say hello to my little friend, and nice. then bang, nonstop, cocaine-fueled, violent rage all the way through the mansion until he escapes. So the player changes the fiction, which allows us to tell another story in that universe where we wouldn't have normally been allowed to do that. All right, so people might think uh, Vice City, when they see this game, tell me why it's different. Sure, I mean, if you look at Vice City, and I think all the GTA stuff are really, really great, the yeah. huge inspiration. Anytime anyone's gonna make an open world game, whether it's Scarface or you know The Godfather, they let's hope that they're learning from those games and not some of the lesser open world games. Right. But in terms of Vice City, it's like, I guarantee you, Tony doesn't drown when he falls in the water. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you can't have a game set in Miami right. and then have the lead character. But really, GTA Vice City, although it is a terrific game, they're really just a Scarface wannabe, you know? It's like mm -hmm. they tried to, you know, borrow uh, lots of different aspects from the film. This is totally different. We don't have to be a wannabe Tony Montana. We are Tony Montana. So that's what really the fundamental difference is that we, also the gameplay story is nothing like GTA. Right. And we also do a lot of things other than, you know, the things that GTA didn't do well, like the targeting mechanics in Vice City were really, really rough and crude. We've uh, gone to great detail to bring in, you know, taking uh, tips from games like Mercenaries or SOCOM uh -huh. that have really great uh, third person targeting and able to put that and in the put game. That in the so game. also we use a lot of other innovations. We have a huge exotic menu. You can play more than one character. Uh, so there's tons and tons of differences between Vice City and Scarface. Cool, well, we can't wait to see it. And uh, thanks Peter. Oh, and Layla Kaylee got to go to the star-studded Scarface premiere party and we'll have that a little later. But right now, let's find out what's going on with Adam. Oh yeah, a lot. I mean, I've been standing here waiting for you to talk to me. For those of you at home who are wondering how you can get this kind of quality pro, pro programming, oh, wow, 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 we've got an answer. There's the Video Game Mashup, TV's only daily block dedicated to all things video game. The heart of the mashup is a show I, I've, I've heard about it, I think it's pretty good, it's called X-Play. That's where Morgan Webb and I play and review every game we get our hands on. The mashup, three full hours, cheats, tips, tricks, and those brutally honest game reviews. Do not miss X-Play and the rest of the mashup weekdays from 4 to 7 p.m. That's right here, right here on G4. And oh, the fantasy role-playing game. This has been an accepted substitute for real social life for a long, long time. Thank God. And the tradition continues. The sequel to the popular fantasy game Neverwinter Nights is on the way to your PC. And here's the exclusive premiere. I give you Neverwinter Nights 2.
Now you can't leave now because I told everyone you come back and they're looking forward to it. Don't make me look bad. E306 Live continues after this. Up next, an exclusive sneak peek at the Reservoir Dogs game. Right after this. E306 Live is presented by Scion. Welcome back to E306 Live. I'm Morgan Webb, and only the faint hope of cocktail hour sustains me. Mm -hmm. and speaking of cocktails, E3 isn't just about the games. There are also parties, and no E3 party had more celebrities than the bash thrown last night for the Scarface game. We sent the intrepid Layla Kaylee to check out the A-list red carpet. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm on the red carpet of the Scarface video game premiere. You do not want to miss this. We're going to be speaking to some celebrities and finding out why they love Scarface so much and why it still stands the test of time. Look, every man deep down in his heart wishes he had the guts to do what he always dreamed of doing. And when you see that look in Tony's eye and he's trying to do it, and he does it the all-American story, you know what I'm saying? The, the immigrant who come up from his bootstraps, whatever way you gotta come up. So, you are one of the voices. Son of a bitch, scum sucking, fucking sucking shit like that. Oh, I never cursed so much in my life. Yeah, I did some voiceovers for the video game and I contributed a song called The World Is Yours. I'm like one of the levels, I'm like this, I don't know, I forgot the exact name of the cat, but one of the Cuban guys was one of the levels where you gotta go through as far as to get my car and get the briefcases. I play one of the femme fatales that um, basically is with Tony Montana the entire time. Oh. So what brings you out tonight? Uh, well, I actually came to experience the game firsthand. See what uh, Tony Montana's up to. Okay. See if I can take him on in a safe fashion as opposed to out on the streets. Okay. Of course, we all know about Scarface, you right. know, and, and the story about Scarface, about a Cuban guy came in and becomes a multimillionaire. Okay. And I think that's what happens to Pedro, right? Say hello to my little friend. Is it little, though? What? If that is it for the evening, I hope you guys had fun. Stay tuned for more E3 and also for the new Scarface video game out soon. Now, a reminder that just because you're in your living room doesn't mean you can't share in the E3 experience. Just log on to g4tv.com slash E3. That's where you can tell us which E3 announcement or debut has most excited you. Or you can text your opinion to G4TXT, that's 44898, mm -hmm, to vote and register for E3 Live News Alerts. Now, let's check in with Adam and Olivia. Now, starting this good. Monday, good. things are going to look very different on Attack of the Show. We have a new set, some new faces, but that same Attack of the Show attitude. And coming up this year, Attack breaks out with week-long road trips. In July, they're going to be crashing the superhero conventions with Comic-Con Live. Yes, in August, we'll head to Sin City, Las Vegas, for a week of the sight, sounds, and only Attack of the Show can bring you. And in September, we're off to Tokyo, the place that seems to be defining what's next, including animation, gadgets, and video games. Yes, and it all starts this Monday with an all-new Attack of the Show, right here this Monday at 7 p.m. I'm watching it. You are? I know. that. Yeah, I, I, I'll be watching it, too. Good, good, good. Well, I hope you're there, too. Oh. And part of the new attack of the show will be Mr. Zach Selwyn. Uh, we sent my him. my favorite guy. He is a good guy. And we sent him onto the expo floor in search of some Reservoir Dogs. And he snagged one. Cover your ear because Zach is about to go one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Blonde himself, Michael Madsen, in this floor report. <laughs> All right, how you doing, y'all? I'm here at E3 in the Reservoir Dogs booth, one of the new games coming out from IDOS, hanging with a man who has lent his name to quite a few titles in the past, but none as personal as this one. I'm talking about Mr. Blonde himself, Michael Madsen. How you doing, partner? It's great to be here, let me say. Reservoir Dogs is a video game. Did you ever think you'd see the day? I've been watching my sons over there play it. Um, I haven't gotten around to playing it myself yet, but uh, they, um, they love watching their dad in the in the game. I think they like it because they can control me. A lot of uh, you know children of athletes say it's great to play their father in a sports game, that kind of thing, because they get to you know make dad the best player out there. Do you think your kids are going to play you and chop off cops' ears and stuff like that? They've already been doing it since we arrived here this morning. That's the first thing they wanted to find on the control sheet was how do you make dad chop off the ear. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the characters in the film, you sort of don't see where they end up. 
Mr. Blue, for example, right. disappears. In this game, we get to follow him out and see where he's going, maybe play him a little bit deeper into his life. Is that correct? You can follow Mr. Blue, and you can follow Mr. Blonde. You can see what he did before they ended up in the warehouse, and you can see what happens to Mr. Pink after he leaves. Reservoir Dogs, the video game. It's coming out very soon, and thanks for talking to us today, my man. Tone down the enthusiasm there, Mikey. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. We're going to a break. All right, but we've got lots more to show you when E306 Live continues right after this. Stay. Stay. We'll check out all the latest offerings from Square and sit down with Stan Lee, the father of all superheroes, right after this. Instead, let's dive into the home of the Final Fantasy series, Square Enix, in this floor report. Take it away, Christian Holt. <laughs> I'm here at the Square Enix booth checking out all the action, but what it really comes down to is just two little words, final and fantasy. So what's your fantasy? FF fans have been waiting for Final Fantasy XII longer than they've been waiting for social interaction and fresh air. Just kidding, peeps. We're all jonesing for this one. A different battle style, control of your own character, and a dreamer caught between warring kingdoms, like a young James Dean. Or is it Dean Kane? I can't keep up with these things. Continuing that hip trend of Valhalla and video games comes the anticipated Valkyrie Profile 2, Slimeria. With lots more combat than the previous game, Slimeria just oozes the highbrow mythology. The Dawn of Mana is a prequel to The Secret of Mana, a cultish hit that's getting bigger and bigger. In this long overdue release, we'll learn more about the origins of the world of Mana. And now, it's 3D. And the never-ending Final Fantasies continue on and on and on, right here at E3 2006. If you tell me your fantasies, I will tell you mine. If you're good, that is. Well, I mean, I, I have to say, I know those were different games. When you look at the cutscenes, uh, they all kind of look the same with those outrageous costumes. No, they do. They do. Uh, I got to say, though, with when it comes to Final Fantasy XII, previous series have all been kind of like preteen, adolescent right. struggles with nothingness. Right. This finally looks like a story that's mature that I can sink my teeth into. Young adult, you're saying? Yes, yes. Struggle Younger. for power. Juvenile yes. lit. That, that kind of thing. Juvenile. It's now the Judy Bloom of Final Fantasy. What's, with, what's Slimeria? It sounds like something Slimeria? Anna Nicole is promoting on a billboard. Yeah, I know. I, I, Honestly, in, in Annex and a few of the other companies, I think they just have like you know crazy word box. Right. They're like, what? We're gonna call this one Slimeria. They're, they're playing Mad Libs with their with their uh, games. Yeah, and people say no, oh, it makes more sense in Japanese. I, I have a hunch. He doesn't. No, All right. they're just laughing at us. They are right now. He, my ex play co-host Morgan Webb and I almost never get a chance to chat before the producers lock us back into our hyperbaric oxygen chambers. Well, that's, that's too bad, but uh, maybe it's good then you can learn so much about her in the, in the Morgan Minute. I can? Yeah, you watch. When you come to E3, there's a lot of noise about the big stuff, but the coolest stories are always the littlest ones. For instance, did you know there is one game for the 360 that doesn't involve guns or balls of any fashion? Hmm. It's Viva Pinata. Yes, Viva Pinata. It's a game where you build an adorable little garden to attract adorable little paper mache creatures. Hmm. Now you're probably saying, yeah, I played this game 10 years ago when it was called Sim Safari, but you're wrong. This game has over 60 different kinds of pinatas with different needs and different temperaments. Some get in fights, and when one of them loses, candy. Okay, it sounds stupid, I know, but so did the cotton gin in the beginning, and Viva Pinata is easily more fun than the cotton gin. Mm -hmm. The game is goofy and adorable, which is an odd find on the 360, the official console of death and testosterone. I'm looking forward to playing it when it comes out around the holidays, and I'm looking forward to what other surprises Microsoft may have for me. In conclusion, I'm Morgan, and that's been a minute. Now, who better to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the creator of the Marvel Comics multiverse, Stan Lee, than Attack of the Show's resident super geek, Blair Butler? Yeah, we agree. I'm here with legendary comic book creator Stan Lee. Stan, let me get this out of the way. It is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, dude. It's a great pleasure to be met. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Marvel Ultimate Alliance. It's an RPG, and I've heard there are over 140 different 
Marvel characters in it. 20 of them are playable. Who are some of the faces we're going to see? You just gave away my whole speech. You almost single-handedly created the Marvel Universe. Is it great to see these characters that you created playable on the screen? It is indescribable. These little characters that were one-dimensional, two-dimensional years ago, suddenly they're not only three-dimensional, but you can, you as the player, can manipulate them. You're not following a story somebody else did. Oh, I wish I had time to play these games. The uh, X-Men, the official game, the playable characters, I think, are, are Wolverine, Iceman, and uh, Nightcrawler. Any other mutants you'd love to see playable? Oh, I'd like all of them. I'd like to see Magneto. Yeah. I'd like to see uh, Juggernaut. I'd like to see the... A oh, I mean, I could go through the whole list, because I love them all. I am my own biggest fan. Hey, I'm done nerding out with Stan Lee, so right now we're going to send it back to you guys. Thanks, Blair. All right, from comics to RPGs, we've got you covered. Here's our premiere of the new game, Fantasy Star Universe. sponsors but don't you get any ideas we'll be right back with lots more from e306 live so your pretty ass better stay tuned son feel the burn as the heat index starts to sizzle with the results of our interactive viewer poll right after this we've gone through an entire hour and here it's time to tap the brakes and find out what you think about this endless parade of mind-blowingness. Let's check out the heat index. All right, let's do that. First up was the revamped Warhawk for the play... Okay. Oh. All right. I just got sliced with a sword. For so the PlayStation 3, you guys said it was volcanic. Mm. Uh, you know, after the epileptic seizure demo at the right. Sony conference, I wasn't quite that it plays, sure. It plays a lot differently. You don't have to play it like that. It was, it was, it was fun. The guy was playing it very emphatically. He did have yeah. trouble landing, but I think people are like the concept of being able to control a plane. Yeah. Pretend like you're really playing it. Guess what? If he, if he doesn't do that, the networks won't cover it. That is All true. Right. All right. That is true. So we got a sneak peek at the LucasArts game lineup, which you rated as warm. Hmm. Mm. They weren't as impressed with the LucasArts lineup. I find that surprising. I like their click and point, uh, the little point and click adventures, actually. I gotta yeah. be honest. I mean, the thing is, I mean, they had mercenaries, but I, I don't believe that they have it anymore. Which what is about just kind of Lego Star Wars? Lego Star Wars is great. It's one of those things where you can play with your kids or, you know, your, the kids you don't it's acknowledge. A little fun. It's one of those games you're like, why am I having so much fun right now? <laughs> uh, okay, now, Tony Montana became the latest classic movie character leap to video games. And your greatest car face is only hot. I, I actually, I understand. I think people are a little suspicious. People are worried it's going to look a little bit like Grand Theft Auto. You know, movie games don't always work, but it's it's a beloved movie. Hey, yes. the with voice the actors were handpicked by the real one. But the thing is, I got two dirty words mm. for that game. Current gen. Mm. Thank you. All right, well, the people at home all voted at G4TV.com slash E3. And now it's time to hear what Black Plastic thought about Warhawk. Great name, That's wasn't it? That's pretty awesome, yeah. Yes, the reimagining of this classic PS1 title. I am hoping more developers will follow suit with more flight combat games. Can yes. I just say this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there What's hasn't that? been a cool flight combat game since Terminal Velocity for the PC. But they made, they've made a lot of them, though. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah. I was talking about, like, you know, Sim or Arcade. Come on, I, I, I like Crimson Skies. <laughs> all right. All right, well, if you guys didn't like the result of the heat index, then do something about it. Get over to g4tv.com slash e3 and vote for what's coming up in the next hour. Or, as always, you can text e3 to g4txt, that's 44898, to vote and register for e3 live news alerts.
But you know what's really hot, though? What's that? Seriously, it's the, it's the latest craze. Sitting patiently through mm -hmm. commercials. Ooh, they give you that. Especially when you're waiting for E306 Live to come back. I'm seriously. It'll it'll get you a girlfriend. It will. It'll get you one? What's going down at E306 tomorrow? We'll tell you if you promise not to blab about it right after this. Live, presented by Scion and Mountain Dew. Now, with all of this evening, Mom Barman has only whetted your appetite for more. You're our kind of viewer. Yes, we well, got to stick around because tonight on G4, we'll be showing all three hours of today's show again, followed by Midnight Spank with back to back <laughs> episodes of Cinematech Nocturnal Emissions. Yeah, now you think that after three days of continuous live coverage, we'd be over this, right? That's we'd be no. jaded. Not but me. we're not. No, no, no. Tomorrow we are joined by the smoking hot Beth Ostrowski. She's the host of the new G4 show Filter, and she'll be live on this very stage that is tomorrow. And as far yes. as E3 goes, I'm still pretty psyched. We got a ton of stuff yeah. left oh, yeah. to talk about. I mean, you boys cannot wait to ogle that woman. You guys have been talking about yeah. her for a couple weeks well, yeah. now. Yeah, pretty yeah. Much. I, I have a lot hot. of stuff that needs to be filtered. I mean, she, uh, my sieve is broken at home. She, uh, oh, she, God, it's a good pun. Oh, that's a, <laughs> did, you go, did you just go Brit on us? Uh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right, let's all get right. out of here. There is still one more action-packed day left here at E3, and we still have three more hours of live coverage to make sure you come away from E3 06 reeking of insider game knowledge. Well, insider game knowledge and $10 pina colada smoothies. Yes, right. keep it locked here on G4. Our live E3 coverage starts at 6 p.m. Eastern and Pacific tomorrow. And if you can't wait until then, yeah. don't worry. Just uh -oh. check out G4TV.com slash, give me the slash, slash E3 for all the sights, the sounds, and even the smells, unfortunately, of the <laughs> L.A. Convention Center. They're right on your computer, on the Internet. The smells well, yeah. no. Since okay. my boyhood on Kashyyyk, you know, there's been a special place in my heart for the Star Wars films, but, you know, I remember many of them. Yeah. Do you? Okay. Yeah, I do. That's it for the Beautiful. show, right? Good night, everyone. We'll talk about it. Give me some shirts. Let's, give it, let's give these guys oh, some crap. There we go. Shirts. Good night.